Monaco Pizza presents S S D P P P the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. Let's go. What would today's show be like if if the Leafs lost last night? Oh, like it's going to be a celebratory show. Miserable. Uh, but it would be an absolutely miserable January day if the Toronto Maple Leafs had lost last night. January 15th, mark it down on the calendar. It would have been the saddest day of the key fair so far. He would have been wow. fired. fired. Four yeah, straight that, losses, which yeah. I think that's enough. I've seen enough. That's an that's automatic. That. <laughs> the Vegas Golden Knights have never lost five games in their entire Five games in a row in their entire franchise history. Really? They hey, Jesse. Four, which is their franchise record, and their coach was fine. Why Done. are we talking about them when we are living in the center of the universe? Who it's cares true. about some outpost of hockey? Does Does Gerard <laughs> Gallant have the shortest leash of any NHL head coach ever? It makes you wonder what did Gerard do to deserve this kind of treatment? <laughs> I don't. Like, and did they call him an Uber to the airport? They did. They must have. Um, yeah. I they, hope it was at least an Uber. There's just so many general managers. Like, looking at their coach right now and going, no, no, I want to see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Gerard Gallant has, like, a bad week, and they're like, out of here, you bum! He freaking brought them to the cup final five minutes ago. He won the Jack Adams Award. He won the Jack Adams Award, which is a death <laughs> sentence, by the way. Yeah. He was a a, a blown five-minute major in the playoffs last year Game away seven. from God knows when. Maybe a yeah. cup. Yeah. Who knows? You know, let me tell you. As host of this fine program, there's nothing I love more than Steve blowing up for our second segment 20 minutes before it happens. Yeah, oh yeah, it happens all the time. Did I not start this show with the Leafs? Could have sworn I started the Drug show with the Leafs. Should he be the new head coach of the Leafs? Yes or no? <laughs> and, I, and I just, I'm just wondering how we got here. You, you do a show with me. I'm just wondering. You how do a show with me. That's here. how we got Let's here. Let's get a new who wore the crowd so I can get you back on the all Leafs. All right, Adam. Uh, Who wore the puberty? <laughs> you. What? That's the Man, end of that segment. Honestly, if one more person goes, hey, <laughs> sounds oh, like you're God. losing your voice. Oh, and What's I, and wrong the, with Adam? He sounds like, like he's 14. Another thing. Thanks for all your terrible comments in the YouTube comments section. Jeez, Adam. Get some lemons and go ham. Yeah, well. Get to, drink some cayenne and get ham. I mean, at least they weren't derogatory towards women. So your your voice will have to take the hit this time <laughs> what, there, Adam. Was there or some? conspiracy <laughs> theories. Or conspiracy theories. Do we theories. get conspiracy theories in our, yes. in our comments? YouTube. Too? That's, that's all YouTube is. <clears throat> that's true. That is true. Hey. Yes. Who, Elizabeth Warren is going to get in and make the WNBA vice president. Who wore the crown? If you live generously <laughs> and life will treat you royally, you know this. Why not put yourself in front of Crown Royal? Why not? Because. We're about to talk about who wore the crown, where we, with the help of you, recognize one Leaf player each show that gives it their all for the blue and white because it's our town, it's our crown. It's not about what you have, but what you have to give. So let's crown that Leaf. Brought to you by your friends at Crown Royal. Live generously, and life will treat you royally. Get into it, Steven. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it to uh, the Sandman. i got to yeah. give it to Rasmus Sandy. Now that Babs is gone, is anyone calling that? They should. Okay. It's still cool. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's still pretty sick. He doesn't get everything. Babcock did some stuff here, but he also did some good. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Blah, blah. But here, here's all I know. Over the past week, Leafs wins without Rasmus Sandin. Zero. Wins with him. 100%. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Cannot argue with that. How it works. Um, and that, I mean, that game was an ungodly mess in the third period. <laughs> But I think part of that is because it was over in a hurry. And uh, Rasmus Sandin was a big part of that. Uh, two assists there in the first. Got to give it to Rasmus. I was hoping for, for him to get that third point because I think he would have been like the youngest Leafs player ever to get three points in a game in a or something. It was what? like no, no, he couldn't have or been, something uh, like there was some sort of stat that he maybe could defenseman have, or he could have tied. Yeah, defenseman or something. There was, was some to sort say, of stat. Uh, Austin might have something to yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was probably defenseman. But anyway, I was hoping for that third point. I don't know what stat they mentioned on the broadcast mm -hmm. last night, but it was something that Sportsnet stats found because they're really good at that. They are freaks. They're freaks. Yes, they are straight up scary. Uh, uh, mine's gonna go to the easy one, Austin Matthews. Uh, v. second. Career hat trick, debatable. Jesse. Not debatable. Not debatable. If you want to have the debate, I <clears throat> am always willing to debate. Yeah, no way, not you. Adam. I hate debating. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing about me, it's that I don't like arguing. Adam, I, I have to cut you off, as I often do. I can't get through the show without asking this question. Jesse, yes. is a hat trick that ends in an empty netter a hat trick? Yeah, it's a goal. We were gonna he have, is spoken! We're having this debate 
later on anyway, so don't get into it now. We're what doing your the ground. What does Gerard have to say about hat <laughs> <We're> just, <laughs> Let's talk about that! I've just got this whole beautiful show planned, and no. bang, 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 bang. Yeah, well. According so to Luke the, Fox. So the Montreal Canadiens, you know? Oh, dude. Let's just talk about that now. Yeah, I wonder if they hire Gallant. Oh, maybe. Here's, okay, he has a French last name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, Luke Vox, Austin Matthews, or AM34 as he put it, scored goal 34 on the Leafs' 34th shot of the game last night. Oh, Whoa! Wow. To complete said hat trick. Austin Matthews on fire. And I, I just want to do a quick shout out to our buddy James Myrtle, who continues to post the Austin Matthews. Um, I Austin, say he does it. Yeah, he, he posts, he posts <laughs> every game what he's on pace for, and then he goes, I say he does it. And, and he's been doing it since James it was like 46. Right. What's that? He's been doing it since it was like 46. Yes. Now, Austin Matthews is on pace for 59 goals. Yeah. I'm Why aren't we talking more about he has a legit shot at 60? Because no one, no one believes it. No one believes it. Okay, well, these are, we are Leaf fans, so we do not have goal scorers. If he We're goes not on the this. worst streak of his entire life, he'll hit forty. Mm-hmm. If he slows down, he'll hit fifty. Let me throw you this, <laughs> Stephen Birch. Stephen Birch. Stephen Birch. The fir- first thing he tweeted this morning, and this was fascinating. And again, I don't know why Stephen Birch is giving this away for free. This on posted at four fifteen a.m. <laughs> 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 and currently, how many tweets was this thread? sitting on the toilet knowing all smart shit. Yeah. Um, I... <laughs> I don't hate on Stephen Birch. His wife gave my wife a delicious recipe for sausage stew. No, Stephen's great. but I... <laughs> Sausage kale. It's healthy. But Stephen gives away some... He's got some takes. Mm-hmm. And I respect mm-hmm. the fact that he's militant about holding up to them. Mm-hmm. However, um, I don't know why he gives information like this away for free. Because this is really good. So In this said, economy, at that time of day, <laughs> so he In start- this part of the world, centralized <laughs> this kitchen. Yes. <laughs> so Matthews has 18 goals in 17 games. Okay. He also opened the year with seven goals in his first seven games. And then he said he only scored nine goals in the 23 games in between. So Matthews in a slump this year was a .39 goals per game, which works out to about 32 goals over the course of 82 games. That's so dopey. Isn't that That's insane? That's so dumb. He's also on pace for, I think it was 99 points. So I, he has a shot at wow. 60 goals, 100 points. Forget the Rocket Richard for a second. He does have a shot. He has a shot at that. Would you not say, if he continues on this pace, you know, continues a torrid pace. I love yeah. that word, torrid. Yeah, torrid. Would you not say that there's a little bit of there's got to be um, one of the two MVP awards that the uh, the NHL announces. There's the Ted Lindsay Award, I believe. Which is the one voted on by players. Right. Yes. And then there's the Most Valuable Player to His Team Award voted on by is... mostly people from Eastern Canada and <laughs> Eastern United States and nobody who, from the West. Who will never vote for the Leafs because never they're ashamed will, of it. Never will they vote for the Leafs because they would be, they would be afraid of being called homers because also their votes are now public. Yeah, not a problem they have in Montreal. No. No, they're like, tell you what, Mike Commissary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. How right? about that, Mike Commissary? Like, like Toronto is a bunch of self-loathers, and then Montrealers are like, no, Jerome McGinley, never heard of him. Jose Taylor, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Jerome McGinley, not top five. <laughs> Jose Taylor, six. <laughs> six I, votes. You have to think. You have to think just a little bit. Not that he would win it. I'm not suggesting he would win it because I don't think he would. Uh, but you have to think that there would be at least a nomination there, an honorable mention there. Top three, yeah. Uh, it's tough because the heart has evolved. We so, <clears throat> we kind of ruined it a couple years we ago. We ruined it? Yeah, well, we? the hockey community and also me because I agreed with it at the time by not giving it to Connor McDavid, who was the most valuable that player so in the stupid. entire world. Which that year? was so stupid. Which, 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 uh, when he didn't year? make the playoffs. Who won it? McKinnon? No. Hall, Hall, Hall. Hall won it. And Hall. it was stupid. Mc, McDavid absolutely deserved it. And you guys were like, no, he can't have it yeah. because he didn't make the playoffs. But, Garbage. But now now it's the... I think winning matters. It's it's the, But now it's the monster, monster player on the team that shouldn't have been in the playoffs that barely scrapes into the playoffs. So McDavid's got to mm. be the front runner. Um, you know who's got a shot at it if his team makes it is Jack Eichel. But it's also <clears throat> it can also be the best player on the best team award. Could be. 
Well, yeah, because like that, rough. That's how a lot of guys <laughs> win that as well, as well. Yeah, so he should be in the conversation, though. I, I think winning, I don't want to get into the whole heart, heart trophy debate, but winning definitely matters. It should. Know. It should. Yeah. Well, and the, the Taylor Hall won it because they won just enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We sort of screwed it garbage up. Take, garbage but, take, boys. Uh, garbage take, garbage. Matthews, legit shot at 60, legit shot at 100. It's wild. It is wild. Jesse Blake. Yes. How are you going to finagle? I don't know if it's going to be hard to finagle. A Pierre Engvall mm. crown into this. I don't think Engvall deserves the crown this week. No, or at least okay. For this episode. I mm. think the man most deserving of the crown for this episode is, surprise, William Nealand. Whoa! I, I know I'm going out on a, on a limb here. Whoa. But he scored his 20th goal of the year. How many? 20 goals. Oh, damn. 2-0. Double Steve's number, which is 10. That's more goals than Mitch Marner. <sighs> more goals than <sighs> Rich Darner. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Rich Darner yeah. sitting in a in an office in Richmond Hill right now going, damn. <laughs> I don't have that rich. many goals. And and Sprague and Odie Cleghorn combined. Rich Darner. It's not in their heyday, though. No. No, no. no. By the way, there's a Rich Darner that listens to this show. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. The <laughs> Smee! <laughs> Finally! I'm Rich Darner! I'm so sick of turning around and it's not me! Yes! Everybody keeps yelling, go Mitch Marner, but I want them to say, go Rich Darner! Oh. <laughs> Thank you! I bring a marker to every Leaf game! Never! Not once! <laughs> Finally! He's always trying to sign autographs. Everyone's like, no! Imagine he celebrates like that Polar did. Like, he's so excited. Like, who do you think you are? I am! I am! (laughs) (laughs) The best celebration of all time. Uh, One thing that's very interesting from, uh, tweeted out from Mike Kelly last night. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, was that was a great one. A a graphic of where William Nylander has scored. Yes! I'm so glad you're bringing this up! Naturally, all center ice. From the outside! um, Hockey do you Steph think Curry. I, I don't know where all William Nylander content is at all times on the internet. You're right. Because I you do, have a nose. Because I do know where it is. You have a bigger crush on him than I have on James Reimer. That's a lot. So my understanding is, before you get into this, that Mitch Marner scores goals only from Bay Street, Front Street, or that weird little circle that becomes Maple Leaf Square. Some people would call Bremner. it the perimeter. Bremner. Ah, Perry yes. Meter. He only shoots from Barry and further on. Wow. Tyson on Barry's house. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Tyson Barry. Which is actually Nazem Kadri's Nazem house. Kadri's yes, house. exactly. There's so many references. So, perimeter player William Nylander has scored 16 of his 20 goals from the net front area (laughs) this season. That is the second most by any player in the NHL. Actually? Yes. So he's basically heyday Milan Lucic, David Clarkson. 100%. Yo, he's eating (laughs) John Tavares' lunch right now. Yeah. Uh, The guy who's mastered it for his career, John Tavares. I wonder what the Severson overtime winner counted as. Was that a shot from the slot? Uh, t- uh, okay, if you want to call it 15, whatever. But no, I don't know. <laughs> that's how it works. Steve, you don't know. So. I don't know. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> I don't know. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> Sorry. So, notorious perimeter player, uh, William Nealander, that's just untrue. He scores most of his goals from the front of the net. He's as good as anybody in the NHL because he's second place in it. Or as bad. Or as bad. Wow. So that, that's who gets my crown. I, you goals, know what? Let's go for 34. Honestly, uh, it is so much fun. When he scored last night, and it was such a great setup. That Engvall setup to him was beautiful. Frigging filthy. And we'll talk about Engvall in a second, who probably, if we had a fourth person, probably could he could have used a crown several times this year. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if he's ever gotten one. Well, but, we should yeah. bring producer Drew on sometime <laughs> from the Dangits and be like, Hey, Drew. Yeah, what, what do, do you, you think? think? And it'd be like somebody from Colorado and be like, get off the show. <laughs> uh, because Nathan apparently... McKinnon McKinnon. <laughs> As we like wrestle him. Shut, shut up. McKinnon. It's, hey, a- it's Engvall. Shut up. You had the heart trophy conversation without bringing up Nathan McKinnon. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Anyway, right. Steve's buddy producer Drew, who doesn't exist, according mm-hmm. to our comments, by he the does. way, on, it's on, on YouTube. He does. Um, I'm looking at it like someone like James Van Riemsdyk, who makes about as much money as William Nylander. Mm-hmm. James Van Riemsdyk, who is a very good player. Mm. 40, his 40, teammate, no, Kevin, Kevin Hayes. For, Kevin Hayes, who also makes the same amount. William Nylander has more goals from where those guys score than they have goals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hayes has 14. Van Riemsdyk has 12. And if I'm looking at Nylander's points, look at this. 41 points in 47 games. You get 24 from Van Riemsdyk in 46, 26 from Hayes. Now, those are just two examples. But you cannot tell me that that Nylander contract is not turning into one of the better value contracts in the league. Well, it is it is 
on its worst day. It's wor- really worth good. It. Yeah. Yes. One hundred percent. Number he should be getting on its worst. Day. It's yeah. it's over. So when it's what over. at what year is it? Year two or year three of Matthews Marner Nylander that people finally say, "Hey, that Dubas is a good negotiator." Because Probably I got to tell you, the trades that he's made. Prove to me that he's a good negotiator. The signings, the the free agent signings, I should say. Yeah. The development. But we, I go back to the Colorado trade with uh, yeah. with, with for Bar- Nas. How did you get Barry and Kerfoot? Yeah, I don't like. I, don't I get I, the I, hate for that yeah. deal. They're so boned without Barry. Oh man, I get that he's been disappointing. They are beyond boned without My Tyson only Barry. Thing with the Marner and the Nylander deals was that the number. The, the painful at, summers? It seems like it was available very yeah. earlier on. Yes. That, that's my only... I guess you hold on to see <clears throat> if you can move it a little. But mm-hmm. then they eventually settle on a number that seems like it was available at the beginning. And it was. That was a little yep. annoying. And, and you know what? You're right. And the, the anguish mentally it caused us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was painful. And yeah. Twitter was a dark place. It's part of the reason yeah. I pulled back. <laughs> Another oh, guy yeah. on a career pace is Marner. Oh yeah, been... when he got that money, I said, you know what, ninety-four points isn't even good enough. And he is on you pace keep for improving. close to one hundred points, even with missing ten games. <laughs> yeah, and if you were to do the eighty-two game pace, yeah, it's, he's he's absurd. He's but a... we don't get summer 20, uh, 2019 back, you know. Right. We don't get that hell of two months. That was yeah. A, you uh, didn't have to contain Steve nightmare. Dangle for two months, you <laughs> bastards. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh... <laughs> so I might be going to the All Star game. Let's wrap up the segment, Joe. Oh, we? sure, 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 sure. Can we? Can we just? <laughs> no, no. I was, I was gonna link it, Frig. I wanted. I wish we had like a ding of how many different topics Steve. Is bam, 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 bam. Ding. If Steve was oh, a battleship, a he would be sentence. firing every direction. <laughs> I'll have a four-sentence transition to make, and it'll be like the, and you go, oh. That's the we way had a plan. <laughs> you rube. You YouTubing peasant. I had a plan! Who do you think you are? I am! <laughs> Which, one day I'm going to break whatever this is. That's baby. who wore the crown for this week. Brought to you as always by Crown Royal. Next time the puck drops, why not live why generously? Not? I am! <laughs> and drink, <laughs> drink your leaf screw to a Crown Royal old fashioned. Woo! All right, what were you going to say about the All Star game? I don't know! You're going oh, to, you're going no, to the yeah, All Star so game. I might be going to the All Star game. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like I'm going to get to interview a bunch of folks. And some names got brought up. Austin, Mark Messier. Austin, well, yeah, Mark <laughs> Messier. If you think I am going to ask him more than one question, you're wrong. Are, are you, you actually? The, the, no, no, Adam made that up. No, are oh, you? Oh. No. Okay. I, actually I would literally <laughs> come armed with, can you hold this cookie above your head? Would you do that? Yes. You'll ask him again? Yes. Okay, okay you have to buy his story, Mark Messier is not my boss. I'm, I don't care. Can you okay. tell the story for people who never time. heard the podcast? <laughs> oh, oh my God! Okay, I'll eventually, really quick, really quick. I'll eventually get to what I was gonna do. Uh, so there was this Hall of Fame stamps thing. It was a nothing event, but it was an opportunity to interview some cool people. Mark Messi? No, no. Sorry, that was the second time I met Mark Messi. The first one was at a Rogers event. I don't even know if I'd been hired by Sportsnet yet, but they had these Stanley Cup cookies, and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna get some funny social content, and I'm gonna get Mark Messier, who has won five Stanley Cups, to hold the Stanley Cup cookie above his head and take a photo of it. And I handed him the cookie, and he goes, no. And I went, okay. And I walked away and felt quite dry. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't like a polite uh... no. No. It and was then, uh, don't ask me to do this, you it was, idiot. It was a... Uh, <laughs> It was a look as if to say, who let this child in? Yeah. Is mm. that lanyard real? It, <laughs> it was not kind. It's so one of my favorites. I, I, I didn't walk away thinking Mark Messier was my friend. See, there's two ways to look at this, right? On one hand, you're just holding a Stanley Cup above your head and it's kind of fun, right? The other hand Why is, not do that? Dude, I'm Mark effing Messier and you're asking me to hold a cookie above my I head. Oh, wow. I real Stanley <laughs> Cup above my head. Yes. yes. I'm not so hold the fuck. cookie. <laughs> You jerk! I called Game 7, or Game 6 against New Jersey in 94. I don't need this crap. <laughs> wow! Oh, wait, no, he won six Stanley Cups. That's My right. Bad. I said five. Could have had seven! <laughs> Mark! Does, does he have uh, one for the other hand? Uh, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, wow. Because he had five with the Oilers, one more than Gretzky did, because mm. they had the one after Gretzky left, and uh, one with the Rangers. Wow. 
It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Only, I want to say the only person to ever captain two different teams at the Stanley Cup. Is enough made about how little Los Angeles did in those first couple of years to surround Wayne Gretzky with depth? No. I didn't think so. Mm -hmm. no. we, that, somebody I mean, needs they to beat deep the dive Leafs, that. so I'm mad at them. So. They, they, they just piled on a bunch of ex-Oilers who weren't Messier. They did bring in Gary Curry. And they then, had like Sandstrom, and yeah, they just tried to rebuild that team. And uh, and and then I guess Gretzky and Robitaille didn't get along, so they traded Robitaille, which was dumb. Was oh, that, did they? Yeah, there's like a story there. Oh, yeah, there's that one of those like weird early '90s stories where Wayne Gretzky was the GM. Sorry, that's best left winger of all time, Luke Robitaille. Without question, I love Luke Robitaille. Except Alex Ovechkin. Okay, fine. Plays Come both on. wings. <laughs> Apparently. He's not done yet. Depending on who you ask. Yeah. I uh, was going to start with, so I'm going to the All-Star game. Uh, going to be interviewing some players. One yep. of them, one of the ones named was Austin Matthews. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I've never actually met him. I've met his parents, um, but that's have cool. not met him. But then Mitch Marner was also brought up. Oh. And I was like, cool. Hmm. <laughs> Don't know about that one. <laughs> Why? Uh, What's wrong? You were critical of of things that were okay to be critical well, of this summer. Oh shit! I don't know if uh, I don't know if he personally was mad. Oh, we know people around were mad. Yeah, people around. Yeah, were mad. yeah, yeah they were mad. But at that's that's what's gonna happen. That's not. And by the way, that's not just you. That's us. All of us. Yeah. So he yeah. can't be mad at you on behalf of all of us. Oh, I want a bet. I don't think so. Maybe he could be. I think he's gonna let it go. Listen, I'm gonna give him a you, Stanley Cup. They're cookie. professionals, and they're gonna act professional. Yeah. And anything that, like, I mean, anything that you said isn't something that everybody else wasn't saying. Oh, I don't regret it. No, I'm just saying. So I said what I said. Yep. Okay. And spilled my coffee. Um, I think Mitch Marner's going to be a great interview. Um, yeah, he'll I be hope great. so. I've met him before. <clears throat> I don't have anything against him. Yeah. Why would you? He's great. <laughs> I don't know. He just plays a... for my hockey team and he's really <laughs> it, good. It was just, there was a tactic happening and we were calling it out. It wasn't even him. It was his <laughs> yeah. agent. Anyway. Wow, it's Matt the same anyways. guy every time. Weird. This guy knows his stuff. Again, like I said, I don't know how Taylor Hall's going to hold out next summer if he's a UFA. Who's he going to hold out against? <laughs> Sorry, NHL, we're going to Europe. He's going to hold out against his own production at this rate. Ooh, I know he's costing himself some money. He, is, he did well, score last night. One thing he's not going to be this winter is cold, because he's just lighting money on fire. Wow. Yeah. Now. Not good. Now. Before we get into this, people were asking, hey, mm -hmm. what the hell happened to Martina Ortiz Luis last night before the game? Words. Our anthem singer, who's amazing, wonderful, been doing it since she was 16, she tweeted this out Wild. minutes ago. Minutes ago being last night at 728. <laughs> Same thing. It was in your uh, LFR. Hi, was guys. As I said yesterday, I'm joining the cast of Winona Earp for their upcoming season, which requires me to be in Calgary for the next few months. I'm going to miss quite a few Leafs games this season. Uh, she goes on to say some really wonderful things. She said, well, I want to thank MLS MLSE and the Leafs Nation for always being so supportive. Uh, I miss you guys. All right, don't make me cry. I'll be back. Hashtag Leafs forever. So we will get her back, uh -huh. hopefully for the playoffs. But it will be the Oregon until then. You know, like, I, I understand this must be so hard for her. <clears throat> and you can sort of tell, like, by the words she used. Um, what a ridiculously amazing position to be in. Right. Your options are have a pretty big role in a TV show, I think still as a teenager, she might be 20 now, um, or be the Leafs anthem singer. Mm -hmm. You're doing all right, Martina. Yeah, <laughs> she's doing great. Worry. She's doing great. And also, I, let's just throw it out there. She needs to use this as a jumping off point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah like, and she, she when she comes this. back, I'm assuming she comes back, it's going to be <clears throat> an uproar. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, I haven't seen Leaf fans get behind an anthem singer like this ever. Scotty Newland. Oh, Scotty Newland. Yeah, yeah, true, true. People love Scotty. Now, uh, the Leafs beat New Jersey 7-4. to four. And in typical Leafs fan fashion, I don't know what New Jersey is focusing on this morning. Probably not on the Devils. But <clears throat> Leaf fans this morning, <laughs> I found at least, were more worried about the 4 than the 7. Nah, not here. Not here, not me. Now, because going into the... Uh, they were, it was up, I think they were up 5-1. 6-1. Mm -hmm. So they, they let in six, one. three more goals. Mm -hmm. It became a game. It became a game, and had Subban scored, uh, so the Devils got a late power play. Subban had two really good chances. If he scored on the first one, the Leafs still would have been down a man because they were. It was five on three. Subban missed, mm. I think, four seconds elapsed or something. So the Leafs got a man back. So when they scored, the penalty was over. But they were very close to still having a six on four down two with two minutes to go. <laughs> Not good. 
the question everybody seems to be asking is, can you win playing like this in the playoffs? And nobody wants to answer the, the question, no, you can't win. Well, then you start crying. Cause I also, like, oh, what's happening can again? you win with a Dermot <laughs> Hall top pairing? No. Well, but they're not going to. The Pittsburgh right? pe- Penguins in 2016. What were they, Hainsey and... That's true. Was... Hainsey was on the top. Hainsey and Guy. And Steve. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember. Um, um, you can win. Yes, you can. Yeah. You need Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. And you need seven it's also, goals. It's also the, the weak decor and this kind of hockey. That's the issue everybody seems to complain about. On and this kind of goaltender. Freddie is uh, right, but is how much of the goaltending is the lack of like all the odd man rushes they're allowed? I think it's a pretty decent amount. Yeah, it's a pretty decent amount. Um, because Freddie had stopped 20 of 21, uh, when it was six to one, and then like Blake Coleman's no joke. That first goal was really, really good, really good second effort from him, which is what he does. Uh, Tyson Berry got beat, Gusev with a great zone exit and set up for Coleman. The third one I thought was weak from Freddie, but it was equally weak by Travis Dermott in front. And the fourth one was a it was a five on four, but it was really a five on three bomb from the from a guy who knows how to bomb it. Right. And also, you know, if you look at uh, don't, don't put yourself down too, man. People are a little worried about Freddie, and and again, I, I get it, but you know, goalies are allowed to not be spectacular all the time. And I also think Freddie was pretty spectacular in the first uh, first few minutes there, too. He made a couple of really great saves. Kapanen with the butt save. I forgot to mention that in that the too. video. Yeah. 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 Um, people are very excited about uh, Rasmus Sandin. They ought to be. And yeah, we, we, I want to deep dive him, on him a little bit here because I think, um, uh, first off, James Myrtle is beating this drum, which I'm I'm thrilled about, which is play the Lilligren and Sandin pairing together. Apparently, Lilligren will not play tomorrow again. Boo. But, but Boo. and Mike Stevens said it too. All of us are just about done with what we've seen with Cody CC. He's fine. But you think that it, don't you feel like it could be better? Oh, 100%. But if you think an NHL team that is down Morgan Riley and uh, Jake Muzzin is going to be like, okay, and now we're going to take out this guy who's been with us all season for a guy who's literally never played in the league before. Right. If you think that's going to happen, I, I think you're a little misguided. Why wouldn't you? Oh, Who cares? I would. <laughs> I absolutely would. It's one game. It would be neat to do for one game. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he gets like a oh, sore knee. Yeah. Like Cody, how's your? You all right? Do you think the you good? You looking the guys in the room would look at it strangely. It if would you're like, hey, you're taking out this guy who's been here forever all season. It'd be a bad look like for the rookie. Oh, so there. You think it's political? I think I it's political. I think it is. Yeah. Cody sees he's a human being. Like how's. That's not going to go well for him. Yeah. And he has been key for them at times. At times. Oh, and big just, I have eyebrow not, raise on that. I have that. not loved it. I have not loved it. Like, I think it. I think if it's Babcock, he <coughs> might do it. J- if, mm. if from, just from the perspective of he doesn't care about what the guy Yeah, but he, he likes CC. Yeah, he, he had him on the top pair. Yeah. Right. But I, if, he, if he didn't like him and he wanted to make the swap, I think he wouldn't he care did. what anybody did. Your logic's there. But I think if, yeah. he, if Keith's looking at this situation, he's like, no... I'm going to do the right thing and have the guy who's been playing all season stay in the lineup unless something catastrophic mm. catastrophic happens. It's a tough word. Yes, yeah. Um, and, like, Keith highly praised Marinson after the game. Cause, so I'm looking at it like we're, at a, we're in a position now where the Leafs are so boned in terms of defensive personnel that they should just forget about handedness and just throw out your best six guys. Yes. But they clearly love Marinson. They're not going to take him out. The only guy to take out is CC. I just think it's really tough politically. I don't know how Lilligren gets in, but I also think it makes absolutely no sense to have him not playing hockey. I don't understand why you can have guys that you can that you can scratch and dress based on the day on the fourth line, but you can't have that on defense. Right. Like I don't understand that. And Cody Cece, I, I don't care about the politics of this. If I am the manager there, whose contract extends beyond this season? Lilligren. Yeah. Who's does it? Cece. Who's not going to be back next year? Cece. So why are we hope, worried about hey, that? I don't know that. Dude, yeah, it's true. We we're don't paying know. you four and a half million bucks to be the sixth defenseman. Just be happy. You're making millions of bucks to be the I don't the know z- what they're paying him four and a half million bucks to do. <clears throat> well, I'm not sure either, but he that's what <laughs> we currently asked the question at the time. That's what, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's currently his role. So at a certain point, you got to have a look at what Timothy Lilligren is going to look like. And maybe, and this is what I think they're probably doing, because Keith talked a lot about in the pregame yesterday about how with Sandy coming back, he wanted to make sure that 
he was up to date on some of the finer points that they had been working on and the systems that they had changed because it obviously was different under Babcock. Mm -hmm. So you give him, I give Lily Green a couple practices. Maybe he doesn't play tomorrow night, but he's got to play Saturday, right? I would hope so. And yeah, one game before the All-Star break, it's not going to throw off anyone's rhythm. It's going to be thrown off anyway. Right. Oh, is that the is, is tomorrow night the Leafs' last game before the All-Star Second last. Yeah, yeah they, last. they got there Calgary is. tomorrow and then Chicago Saturday and then that's it. Yeah, they went every other night since Sunday. Jesus. So, yeah, it was Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Uh, I'm trying to look at Leafs' PR right now because I'm wondering if there was just a paper transaction because they're at home, right? So you can call them up. His cap hits on the books. Then you send him down, call him up, send him down, call him up, send him down. That's it's the benefit of a homestand. So it looks like they're jerking him around, but like it, it, I think it's just cap shenaniganery. I don't think the Leafs think this is a good idea to just have Lilligren sitting there. You know what I mean? So you don't think they brought how him could up they, at all? How could they benefit play? from or, having him up? Sorry? Cap-wise, how could they benefit yeah. from having him up? They need to be as close to the cap as possible to get the full benefits of LTIR. I've had it explained to me a thousand times, and I still don't fully understand it. Um, huh. ba- basically... When you're dipping into LTIR, you gotta like use it. It's it's. <sighs> oh wait, so you're when you're dipping into LTIR, you've got to use your full cap. Something like that. The closer you are to the cap, the more benefit you get. <clears throat> and or you get to go above it. Yeah, and like or something like that. Like all season long, the Leafs have been within like fifty grand of the cap mm-hmm. um, when factoring in LTIR. So I, I think it's just a paper transaction. That's why they've given. Interesting. Like, they've called up a bunch of guys and, like, either barely used them or not used them at all. Marchment was barely used. Brooks, um, I assume, is going to get sent down pretty soon because it sounded like Trevor Moore is close to coming back. Um, Tamu KV Homme got a call up, never played. Uh, Lilligren got a call up, never played. Bracco got a call up. We didn't even discuss it because we knew he wasn't going to play. Right. So we I don't even know if like he left the Marlies. You know, r- yeah, he might not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jeremy. Bye, Jeremy. Like I, I think it's just a paper transaction. We're probably making too much of it. But if if they're holding him in the press box and he's not playing hockey games, that to me makes no sense. So there's that. Hmm. There's that. I don't know. I think I want to say of all those guys I mentioned, he probably has a higher cap hit because he's a first round pick. Like yeah. a, a higher hit than like a Brooks or a Bracco would have. That's just off the top of my head. Okay. So I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I I, um, I want to ask you guys this because... I want to answer it. The word is, so if they can make it through the next two games now, mm-hmm. it looks like they'll get Muzzin back after the All-Star break and the bye week because they go bye week All-Star, which is great. <laughs> nice little combo for them, right? Yeah, they should definitely not rush him back. There's mm-hmm. no reason. There is no reason. And <laughs> it's so funny... Uh, Watching, you know, Tim and Sid and stuff, and, and <laughs> Sid loves to just poke at Leaf fans, and it's so funny because every damn day they go for it, every day. Oh, so, so wouldn't Sid, you go back to the river if fish kept jumping out at your boat? Yeah, so Sid, like, Sid's a genius because he goes yesterday, if the Leafs don't get a defenseman in the next month or so, they're not making the playoffs. Yeah. Not said, making Wham. the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> like, they he can't. Down, he's like, it's probably not even one, it's probably two defensemen. Yeah, they won't make which, the which so. eight, okay. there are not two defensemen out there. Yeah, okay, B, here's one. Jake Muzzin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's another. Morgan Riley. Yeah. But, I, but you know, I can I know what Sid's doing, and it's fucking yeah. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. This People are so awesome. upset. Uh, no, but I, This isn't bad for the Leafs. I was going to ask you a couple things. Is it, A, good for the team to ride it out? Yep. And, B, good for the assets to ride it out? So, the, by the team, I mean, listen, we need Dermot to, we need to see what Dermot can do. Yep. I need to see what Travis Dermott is outside of the third pairing because we've been we know there have been flashes of things here and there and he's been up and down and injured and all these sorts of things. I want to know what Travis Dermott is. I want Travis Dermott to play, Dermott to play major minutes and there was no way to justify that unless Morgan Riley and Jake Muzzin are down. Mm-hmm. And they are. So yes. now's the time. Yeah, and because Keefa said that. Because if you see what Dermott is now, it it helps you decide whether or not Jake Muzzin comes back, which by the way we've heard We've heard Jake Muzzin and and Kyle Dubas have sort of started talking about an extension preliminary. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's just, yeah, Bob McKenzie reported that a couple oh, nights ago. Oh, that's what you meant by coming back. I'm like, well, he's coming back. Yeah, I no, no, I mean coming back to the to oh. the Leafs. And I think, I think that helps you determine the value. Now, Jake Muzzin brings things that Travis Dermott does not and vice versa. 
uh, you know, Jake Muzzin's yep. arguably the only tough guy, tougher guy on the team. And I think part of that is the beard. But he also throws insane yeah. hits. Dermot's a tough prick. Yeah. No, I know, but, but, but Dermot's not going to lay a guy out. But Muzzin's the only guy on the roster right now who's <clears throat> defensive first. Probably. You know? Yeah. You go down Probably. the lineup, Dermot, Barry, Riley are all offensive defensemen. Right. Uh, it also is going to help Travis Dermott figure out what he's going to make next year, because if I'm not mistaken, he's up. This mm-hmm. is the big thing. He's up, and I remember at the beginning of the season, someone, I can't remember who, <clears throat> posted an idea of what his contract extension might be. I can't remember they the said amount They said $3 million of, bucks a year or something? I think it was three years, 3.5. That's high. 3. 5 That's high. Mil. That's too and much. right now I'm looking at him as a player, and I'm going, explain Mm-mm. why you should make more than Justin Hall. You shouldn't. <laughs> not yet. I, explain why, because I'm not seeing it. I'm not... I think Dermot absolutely has the potential. He is far younger than Justin Hall. This is this is it. Show me. This is the time. All Star games and the show me state. And playoffs. Show me. Yeah. Show He's me the playoffs. And playoffs. Like, how much better is he expected to get? Well, defensively, you know? they say mature, like right up until they're 25, right? So he mm-hmm. could. He's got the talent. And also, you know, you had. Inconsistent play under Babcock, and then you had a nasty injury, a really right. nasty one. Yes. So I, not I give everyone, him that. Not everyone bounces back better. No, not everybody. Zach Hyman, <laughs> which is what insane. a cyborg. Yeah, crazy Holy yeah. shit. But but with yeah. Travis Dermott, I agree with you, and I wonder with Travis Dermott this summer if he doesn't take a bet on me deal. So they offer him a three year deal that looks like Justin Hall's, and he goes, "Well, I'd like to make three or four million a year." And then he takes the Andreas Janssen seven hundred thousand. Yeah, he wouldn't take seven hundred thousand. But remember, Janssen did that last year. Uh, yep. And then got Something his deal because like he earned it. And I wonder if if J- Dermot doesn't do the same because there needs to be he needs to be a part of this team next year. He's obviously a part of the future. But when you look at the results so far, Steve, you make a perfect point. Tell me he's worth more than Justin Hall based on the numbers, based on the advanced stats, based on everything that you've seen. And There's you not enough in? consistency to his game yet that what? that you would say, I'm going to commit much, much more than a couple million bucks a year. And now there's a question of where do you fit? Where do you even fit? Well, Mu- that's what I mean. If Muzzin's coming healthy. back, where are you going to put him? Yeah, fully healthy. You got Riley. You got Muzzin. You got... Now... Now, now Sandin. By the end of the month, it's going to be... Justify being higher in the lineup than Sandine. Who's a who's or by the end of February. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like one hell of a pick. Can and now we know Dermot can play the right side if you need him to. We know Riley can do that too. I don't know if that's the best use of him, but he can. But And is so, that the best use of Dermot's development to play him on the right side? I don't know. I don't know. So it's a really there is endless opportunity for him mm-hmm. and a lot of questions if he doesn't grab it right by the horns. The other one I want to uh, I want to talk about is um, um, is Muzzin himself. Now Jake Muzzin's twenty nine years old. Uh, we, what a we, what a geezer. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> he feels older than me, and I'm like two or three years older than the guy. I still I have a big problem with that. I know. I always look at these guys like they're way more adults than I am. Almost every player on the Leafs is older to me or older than me in my eyes. Yes. <laughs> it's weird when you yes. cheer with like especially a couple years ago when Matthews was like nineteen or sitting yeah. there and we're like, Go and you're just like, This is a little teenager. Go child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, you're guy. our hero. Well, I, I, I remember walking around the Leafs uh locker room uh one day that year during the sixteen seventeen and just looking around and going, Oh, like, like it just dawned on me. I'm like, I think this is the first time in my life I've been older than most of the Leafs. Mm-hmm. Except yeah. for, like, Hainsey and Pola. <laughs> Basically. All right. I'm trying there, to think of who else. There is a lot of money coming off the Leafs' defense next year. And two of the names are, are, are Barry and Muzzin. And <laughs> yeah. mentioned in uh, LeBron's column today, Pierre LeBron for The Athletic, he said this, I believe re-signing Jake Muzzin is probably Toronto's number one priority. But seeing how Tyson Barry has responded to Sheldon Keefe must give the Leafs pause. Barry will be looking to earn a raise from the 5.5 he's earning this year. He only counts for 2.75 against the cap. But what I would say is that for a while, all of this appeared like a moot point because he wasn't going to come back. Babcock was burying him. They were looking for potential trades, remember? I they, remember. A month into the season, they're like, we might have to trade Tyson Barry. I, I kind of wonder how much impact Tyson Barry had on the decision to fire Babcock. I think it would have been big. Because they're yeah. like, okay, you know what? He's he's genuinely fucking up our roster at this point. For no reason. We, no. None. None. We're going to make Tyson Berry be friggin' Sean Walker. Like, we're going to make him be someone he's not. Yeah. 
It made no sense. So he said things have changed. He's enjoying life as a Leaf and under his new coach. And and what this this is the quote. He said, yeah, Sheldon's been great for me. I love the guys. And I'm starting to love the city and get to know it a little better and getting more comfortable. I have no idea what my future holds. It'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. But definitely I'm a big fan of it here. So <clears throat> my question is, I mean, Tyson Berry for sure has burned some money. You know, he wants to make $8 million. He wants the John Carlson contract from a few years ago. I don't think he's going to get it. Yeah, John Carlson's, like, going to win the Norris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's not going to get it because he's not that player. Honestly, we thought John, we, we thought the Caps were nuts because yeah. for signing John Carlson to that. Whoops. We were wrong. Whoops. But um, I have to say, you know, if you have if you have Tyson Berry and you have Jake Muzzin, and this is going to be an unpopular opinion, my opinion is that maybe you want to take that money and invest it in Tyson Berry. He is two years younger. He has got wheels. And I wonder about the miles on Jake Muzzin's body. I really do. Because when Jake Muzzin slows down, mm -hmm. it's going to be real quick. He's one of those players that it's like Cliff. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, his contract is going to be a big... Uh, term is going to be the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hard miles. And he does... He plays the sort of game where when it stops, it's, it's, it's going to be with a thud. That's and a he, very good point. And man. he made, remember, he was on every Los Angeles playoff run. And for years and years and years, they were two or three rounds deep minimum. Mm -hmm. Won a couple cups. But also, on the years that they didn't, they were the toughest team in the West. And it was a shock when anybody got past them. Those wars with Chicago. Yes, and, yes. Oh, man. And he was a part of all that. Now, he's only 30 years old. But part of me wonders, there's going to be a lot of GMs who are willing to pay big dollars for Jake Muzzin. And I love Jake Muzzin. I'm saying this. But you have a cap to look at. And with Tyson Berry being 29 when next season starts, are you comfortable committing five years to Tyson Berry or five years to Jake Munson? And, or do you let them both go and go hard after Petrangelo, which could cost you $11 million? There's, there's a lot There's a lot happening here. So not just Petrangelo. So the, the big thing that we were talking about before the show on Hockey Twitter today is why not go out and get Subban? If you can do Subban for Subban Johnson, seems like he's got a back issue, and NFL. I I don't you know you see what's happening with Jake Gardner right now. Yeah, on your roster right now who are better than PK Subban. So why where are you putting him? Yeah, so the the justification I see there is he's got a he's got a back issue right now. He may not always have it, right? Like he might be sure. able to rehabilitate it. Maybe the Leafs are the look at what's happened with Jake Gardner though, who didn't have to have surgery, quote unquote. Right, he can't even find a spot in Carolina. I think Subban, if you were to acquire him, and that's any team, I think that's an off-season move. Yeah, if you want to optimize him, that's an off-season uh, move. Now, everyone trading Andreas Janssen right away because, and I understand it, and we've done it on the show um, because of the emergence of a guy like Pierre Engvall and even Soup before he went down. Um, oh, we can afford to trade him. I agree. That is why you trade him in the off-season. There's no reason to trade him right now. Unless you, you want that backup goaltender that I keep saying. Okay, do you want the backup goaltender for the playoffs, or do you want to have a truly formidable, undeniable offense? You need too yeah. many good players. You do. You need too many good players. And that's players. a good point. You don't want to trade all your depth because people are not going to be yeah. healthy they, all the time. Can they right. trade Trevor Moore? Absolutely. You you might end up needing them I at some point. I don't see a problem with this team going into the playoffs. I don't hate it either. Healthy. Don't, Healthy? No. I don't, yeah, I think this year you can try it out. Like, I don't see the rush for a move at the deadline. There will be those, Jesse, that, and I'm, I'm only playing devil's advocate oh, on cool. this, that are like, well, that's two years for Dubas, and he hasn't got past the first round, if he doesn't get past the first what, round. What is it? Uh, if he hasn't got past the first <laughs> round, here's my call of them from the sun. You sound like that guy who's like, what's up, me and my boys are going to go see Uncle Cracker. Yeah, that's what I mean, from the yeah. sun. Because the guys from the sun hang out at the beach all day. That's right. what I'm saying. Right. No, the, you're... I agree with you, mm -hmm. but there's going to be a huge call from how come they can't get past the first round, mm -hmm. and it's got to be the D. So what would you say to that? I'd say, well, it depends on how that first round series goes. It's If you go into this playoffs and you get hammered because you can't score in the playoffs, then that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And if you get, and then if you can score, but the other team scores more, then that's what you need to address. I, just, I feel like you got to give it some time for him to see what this team is. 
Right. Because that's that's all he's been that's all he's been saying. That's all he wants to see is what these guys are. And it, finally, we can finally get a year where he's got his guy behind the bench, and it's not Babcock who's going to run Matthews out there for twelve minutes in the third <laughs> period. Well, and there's the entire uh, game is game seven. Now you can finally run his horses, let play three lines, and see what they can do. And hang on to that point for just a second, Steve. Sure. To your point, Jesse. There is this narrative that's been out there for a while, and I don't understand it, about how the Leafs are, the playoff, the, the window's going to close soon. It's no, it's not. Ridiculous. Let me give you right now. No. It's going to open up wider. Let me give you the healthy players, average age on forward right now. Can anybody guess what it is? What's the average age of the healthy up Leafs front? forward lineup right now? Forwards. 24. 25. 25. And that's because Spets is 36. Ah, oh, damn it, Jason. <laughs> yeah, take out the 30. Take out, J- J- take out Jason Spezza and you're right. Who, by the way, is on pace for his best season in three years? For the healthy Leafs defense, which is a little bit younger, obviously, a little bit skewed, but still, what would you say? Is Sandine in this equation? Yes. Um, 25. I've got fairly open eyes. Oh, okay. I can't. Yeah. 24.3. It's younger. It's younger. I'm surprised. So the thing, the, the thing I want to point out to you here is that's five good years from... Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And for everybody that says, well, how, how, what if they are not able to replace the depth? Guys, they have the superstar signed. You know, the, forever. You know, there's a draft every year. Yes. And it's funny because the Leafs took essentially a second round pick in Sa- for their for that first round pick, oh, that Sandin yeah. pick. And they drafted Rasmus Sandin. Mm-hmm. So, so. M- Mikheyev was the guy they just like found. They're going to be able to do it. So, if you want to play for the Leafs, sure. And so, oh, wow, those, we said. <clears throat> and all of those 22 and 23-year-olds, they're only going to get better. Yes. They that's just, the whole. They're not regressing. Man, I have i haven't seen as much evolution in a player as I've seen in Austin Matthews. Right. Yeah, that it's, guy it's different is so this year. quick, and it's ridiculous. He was he was in, I would, I would call him like Super Kessel territory, where he had this one undeniable thing, like Kessel sort of. I remember Ron Wilson making fun of him, like, man, t- take a slap shot. Like, take mm-hmm. a backhand. Like, he, mm-hmm. he he did one thing, and it would get him 30, 35 goals every year, but he did one thing. Matthews had this bazooka of a wrist shot, and now he's he can tip it in. He can blast it. He can wrist it through your legs. He can dangle you and pass it to somebody else. Like, His, he's ridiculous. The awareness on the redirection from oh. Mitch Marner, where he's just standing next to the net and he just kind of flicks it, he made it look so effortless. And he does something that the best goal scorers do. He knows how to turn into a ghost. He knows no one knew he was there. He knows how to float and get away from the defense and go to the weak side and just disappear. And then all of a sudden, the puck's on his stick and he scores. Like Mm -hmm. what Kessel did a couple times last night. Did you guys see the highlights? No, no. He was he was one of the one of the game one of the shots uh, was it was the it was key it was vintage Phil Kessel hash marks top corner absolutely stunning lead leg. There's another one where and I forget who the center was. I think it was Stepan or something. Does a spin around in the offensive zone. Finds Kessel, and Kessel, and I'm not kidding, is at the hash marks, wide open, mm. flying in. And it is in the net so fast that mm-hmm. even the replay, you have a hard time seeing the puck. And that's his second goal. And it's it's exactly what you guys just said. Goal scorers do that. Yeah. They disappear. The nights when Kessel's on, you're just like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> There's no stopping yeah. this. He's going to have a, ba- everybody's it's gonna have a bad night. It's not every night, no. but uh, he's there. And, and Matthews is such an anomaly because normally you see that from a winger. Right. Mm, this is right. a centerman that does this, right? I, I, most centermen I was I grew up watching were passers. Mm-hmm. And Matthews is yeah. a finisher, clear cut. The game's changed. All the games are it's changed. Just, it's so much easier for the winger because you're the third man in after the other two forwards. And you just kind of come in behind the D and then you find your spot and you kind of disappear like Kessel. But for the, the fact that Matthews can just do that in the offensive zone as a center, it's unbelievable. Well, and it's on the power play, it's, it's amazing what you can do when you don't just have five guys standing still. Anymore, <laughs> right? Yeah, isn't that great that they move? <laughs> they use their skates. It's so weird. I feel bad for every. Sorry, DJ Smith and Jim Hiller and oh, Dave yeah. Haxtall and oh, uh, Paul McFarland. Sorry to all of you. I I get every every Leafs win makes me as mad as the losses <laughs> these days. Why is that? <laughs> because I look I look at what they're doing and I'm like, I didn't realize how on the nose we were the whole time. The whole It could have been time. like this. The Co- whole time. The whole time. 
Do you remember when you just sit there and watch the power play and be like, all right, they're going to pass it over the point, and then they're going to go do. around to the Mitch, and Mitch is going to yeah. stand there, he's going to oh, pass it off, or he's going to Drop pass at the blue line. Oh, that didn't work. Another draw pass at the blue line. Oh, no, it's been an entire minute, and they haven't gained offensive zone entry. Oh, let's switch it off for the very much inferior second power play unit. How many times <laughs> do we see them try a zone entry the exact same way three times, and you look down, and half the penalty's gone, and now we bring on the second unit? Mm-hmm. F. But uh, Matthews, wasted opportunities. Wasted. M- Matthews tipping goal was a minute into the power play uh, last night. The mm, that was the five one goal. That's line change time. Mm-hmm. A couple months ago, that's line change time. <laughs> oh, drove me nuts. Anyway, like a this, month and a half ago too. Like so, <laughs> so recently. Yeah, like... But we started this conversation talking about the Leafs um, defense. Um, talking about playoff experience, there is a guy who went three rounds deep. Narrowly missed out on the Stanley Cup final. His name is Cody Cece. I wanted to look back at that run. Okay. And how he did. <laughs> the Senators run? Yes. From the 2017 one. 2017, okay. He played 19 games. That's a lot of playoff games. Okay. I would kill for, well, I want more than that, but unless they win 16 of them. All right. How many points do you think he had in 19 games? Cody Cece. Uh, well, uh, he was playing with Carlson, so he must have had a lot. I don't know how consistently he played with Carlson. So 19 games, he said? 19 games. I'm going to say that Cody Ceci had seven points. Seven points in 19 games. Seven points is what he has now in 47, by the way, with the Leafs. But he's playing with Eric Carlson a little bit, so. Okay, well, he's playing with Martin. Uh, how many points? How many points did Cody Ceci have in his playoff run where he played 19 games? Yes. 19. He was a point of game player. He had zero goals and one assist. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bro, um so this guy I feel bad for Cody Cece. I've I've cuz I know first round pick and that's beaten to death. He just seems like the sort of guy who could have been developed so much better. Maybe it was never there. Um I think this all comes down to like we're 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 trying to galaxy brain this defense, and I'm just kind of like, I know you need too many NHL cal- caliber players. Mm-hmm. I think he could be a six seven. Mm-hmm. He makes too much freaking money. If you can find a way to get him out the door and bring someone else serviceable in, you have to do it. I don't care what it costs you. If it's picks, this year, if it's picks, I don't care what it costs you. See, I don't, I don't mind them keeping him for this year. I don't mind no? it. Like it no, nah, like I, I, on the list of priorities, like I don't even list my number one priority for the Leafs right now is is it backup goalie, backup goalie above everything. And if I had a sports talk TV show, hmm? I would be the guy saying no, not defense, goaltending. Ha- you have to find a comparable backup goaltender who not only if is going to be great show. on his own. But it's going to be the guy that takes over for Freddie Anderson in a season and a half. That is what they need. That's the important one. Takes over for Freddie yes. Anderson. Well, so they You're have... not re-signing Freddie Anderson. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, no. You're they not. Have... I'm on that team as well. They have exactly one player in the system who even projects to maybe be a starter right now. Maybe. Uh, and that's Joseph Wool. Um, Ian Scott is... Is injured forever. Right He's now. missing a full year of hockey. He might come back and be good. Might even come back and be an NHL starter one day. Stranger things have happened. But right now, you got to look at it. Like, Kasky Swo might be a serviceable backup. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And by serviceable backup, I mean equivalent to Hutch. Maybe 20 games. 25. If you're lucky. And I don't count on him being amazing. Yep. What I would do if I were the Leafs right now is I would bring in that guy, or try to find him in the, in the next six months, doesn't have to be right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I would prefer it going into the playoffs. It seems as though the Leafs management is shifting their thoughts on Freddie Anderson. This idea of rest, it just doesn't seem to be happening. So they're so Sheldon Keefe even hinted at it. He said, you know what? When the guy's workload is high, he seems to do well. And it's, uh, and, and so and you know and 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 I think a lot of assumptions have been made about Freddie Anderson in the playoffs against the Bruins, especially that first playoff series where this narrative kind of picked up. And you know, the first two games he was awful, but I think. And then he stole the third. He stole the third and, and, and was the reason they made it to the seventh. Right. I think what happened was 
Things things went crazy. Hockey's nuts. And this idea that he's got to be stuck to 50 games, it's just clearly not going to happen this year. It's just not going to happen. So you may as well commit to, we're going to play Freddie's legs off uh, right. while we got him and while he's at this level. You may as well. Ride or die with this guy. But, but know in the back of your head, and the Leafs, Leafs management has got to be thinking this, goaltending has to be the number one acquisition priority. Your defense is going to be fine. Sandin and Lilligren are coming in. You're probably going to re-sign Muzzin. You're going to have Riley next year. Like, you're, you've got Marinchin for another year. You'll find people. Dermot's going to be back. Like, there's five guys right there that you're like, that's a pretty good top five. Most teams would take that. But I look at, I look at their goaltending and go, that is a big, fat question mark. What if, th- this is just an idea I have, okay? So it sounds like getting a guy like Georgiev is going to cost you an arm and a leg. Mm-hmm. And don't forget, you got to re-sign him too. Yeah. So the best option available still isn't a great option. What if you gave Freddie a second bye week of sorts? Okay. So he's got one coming up. He's going to mm-hmm. get lots of rest. It's clear his rhythm is thrown all the way off. There's a lot of opportunity to get it back after the break, after the All Star break. They play a lot of games. There's a lot of games against Western opponents, mm-hmm. which kind of makes me want to play Hutch in some of those. But I want to get Freddie back into a rhythm. He needs rest before the playoffs. Okay. He and I'm just I'm just looking. I'm trying to look for targets here. I see they play Vancouver Saturday, February 29th. By the way, there is a February 29th this year. Is this a leap year? It is a leap year. It sure is. Wow. Yeah, I know. Um, so they play Vancouver Saturday, February 29th. Then they are off till Tuesday when they go on the California road trip. Okay. Um, against the Sharks. They get the Kings on the Thursday. So what if they gave Freddie, or what if they gave Hutch the Tuesday? And like, I'm talking even call up Kasky Swo for the trip. Yep. Instead of maybe carrying two extra forwards, have Kasky Swo there, have him and Hutch deal with it. So when does For a come couple back? games. He either comes back the Thursday against the Kings or the Friday against the Ducks because they have the back-to-back there. So maybe you just have Freddie sit the entire California road trip, but he's probably going to want to play against the Ducks. Have him come back against the Ducks. There it is. And then Or just he's... say, Freddie, listen, uh, I know you want to come back against the Ducks, but we need you to come back against the Bruins or the Lightning in the playoffs. No, you know what? He'll get nearly a week off there. I'll make that concession to Freddie. He gets nearly a week off, and then pedal to the metal. Then he's got the Lightning, the Preds, the uh, the Bruins, and it's going to be Freddie Mania. He's got a month to figure it out ahead of the playoffs. Okay. It's I a, think he needs like a modified second bye week. It's a strange, strange suggestion. Well, it's that or spend an ungodly amount on a goalie who may not solve your problems and may not stay. So, um, number 19... On 31 Thoughts, which was just released uh, a couple minutes ago. Toronto fans tweeted up a storm of Jeremy Bracco trades to get Gorg- Georgiev from the Rangers, but it's going to take more than that. Georgiev beat the Islanders 6-2 on Monday, and while New York is looking for a talented forward who is ready to play, they realize how good Georgiev can be. That person is Andreas Janssen, guys. That's fine. <sighs> it's a I shame. Don't, yeah. it, you know what? It's a shame, but I've also, <laughs> I also said it last show, and it's not because I don't like Andreas Janssen. We know what Andreas Janssen is. This is what he is. With a healthy soup, I'd be more than willing to do that. And soup will be healthy eventually. Oh, I hope so. Dude, the Leafs were were winning without him. Engvall stepped in. I know, but now you <clears> take <throat> out Janssen, so who's mm-hmm. on the third line there? Who cares? What do you mean, who cares? Who cares? It's important. Steve, Steve. Who's you there? Got, you got your goaltending. Who Adam, is it you there? you got to fill it. Who's there? Uh, Kapanen, you got Kapanen. Kapanen's on the right. Okay. Who's on the left? You got Captain Kerfoot. Let me look at Daily Faceoff. Who do they have? Captain Kerfoot. Is it Timoshov? Is it it Moore? Is it Moore's coming back eventually? You got Adam Brooks. You're gonna put him third line left wing. Where'd you put the NHL? Where'd you put Angle? Second line. Oh. Okay. First one on the first line. Well, he is playing. Why not? (laughs) He is playing on the second line. So Kerfoot goes to the third. (laughs) Kerfoot's third line center. Okay. And then you've got... Wait, why are you moving Kerfoot? He's already been moved. He's on the. He's third line center now. 
Because they got Engvall yeah. uh, where he but, was. Yeah. Okay. Because so that's what it makes yeah. sense. So yeah. then it's yeah. Kerfoot, Kapanen. And? This is, what it, this is where I'm going. Who fucking cares? Me. <laughs> it doesn't. I care. Dude. So, I don't understand. Oh. Where, how are you missing forwards? What do you mean, how am I missing forwards? There are enough forwards on the team. There are hey, enough. you know who you could try? <laughs> Jeremy Bracco. Right. Third line left wing Why not? in the NHL. Why not? You absolutely cannot. Where do you you can't Spencer? try Jeremy Bracco? You, you can try him. It's not what I want. And the then the comes Jason, back. Where do you have Jason Spezza and McKayev and Goat? I don't think any of those guys are ideally third line left wing. No, Spezza is ideally the fourth line guy, but he's been sure. great. I mean, you can't. No, let's not you get need, the goalie of the future you need because our too third line many left good wing. Players. What about Nick? No, no, no. Hold off on the third line left wing players. is missing. We can't get the goalie of the future. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, I didn't realize we were handing out a fourth crown today. No. <laughs> and your give, goalie of the future. Like, I, no, but that's what I, that's what you get him for. Dude, you have to give to get, and it's time to give to get. You got to give Do it now. To get something. Do it now, and here's the you thing. You gotta give something to get some. <laughs> and that is true. You know who? You know who Steve plays Daniels left wing? Nick Patan. Right. I forgot he existed. Yeah. You know who else plays there? Kenny Augustino, who's had a great year. Nah. Pontius Aberg. Nah. I'm just saying. Well, they had him on the <laughs> first friggin' Kenny line Augustino for a while. <laughs> that was anybody, that was a little much. <laughs> anybody that's been watching the Marlies can tell you Kenny Augustino's had a great year. Yep. And the fact that he hasn't even been up yet. That guy was in the NHL last year. He was another guy who got a call up who didn't play. Yep. You could even try Korshkov. Why not? Throw a couple games at him. Ooh. Adam, thank you. I asked questions, you gave me answers. Oh now we're cooking. No, I didn't think of those <laughs> things. No, but it's, it's just the sense that you're trading from a strength and you can worry about it after and you go get the thing you need. Yeah, but I want to make sure the strength stays strong. Okay. And that's so fair. I, all I was asking for was solutions. Boom. Solutions. Don't all eliminate right. a strength to address a weakness. I agree. All right. But if Andreas Johnson's it's what it's going to cost you, then that'll be what it costs you. Remember when Freddie Anderson was traded for? You remember your reaction to that? Uh, you were trepidatious. I was trepidatious. Because there was well, a first round been, pick involved. I had just been burned so many freaking times and that's by fair. the Leafs. Yeah. <laughs> and especially California goalies. I get oh, it. Oh! But. It was pretty freaky. But, and then, so they traded for Freddie and then signed him to a five year, $25 million deal. Oh five my times God. Five. I hated it. I didn't mind it. He wasn't a certified starter yet. Yeah, it was just too many ifs. And it was the second, no, it was the third straight time the Leafs had gotten the backup goalie <laughs> from a California team and paid him starter money. He yeah. was a platoon. Excuse he me. Was, that's true. And there were a lot oh. of Ducks writers, including our friend Jen at the time. Jen Neal? Who said, Jen Neal, who said, Freddie Anderson is the better of the two. They said the same thing about Bernier. They did say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. That and argument Tosca should was. be true because Jonathan Quick, as Andrew Berkshire always says, has a couple good months a year. <laughs> <laughs> they just happen to be in June. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, um, they won him some cups. More. Vesta Tosca at one point was supposed to be yeah. the best goalie out of three that San Jose had. The other two <clears> were <throat> Evgeny Nabokov and Mika Kiprasov. I would have taken Nabokov in a heartbeat. Ooh. Well, he was like a perennial all-star. It's yeah. just the... I would have taken 38-year-old Nabokov that tried to sign to Detroit and ended up on the Islanders over Vesatoska. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, remember that? He had to clear oh, waivers, yeah. and the Islanders were like, yoink. Yeah. Or, thank you. <laughs> As NHL 2005 Jim Houston calls them, Nabokov. Oh. oh. <laughs> right. Robbed by... <laughs> sniped on by Stan. <laughs> <laughs> Parse takes the puck Parse. away. <laughs> How did you not know Parise at that point? I, Come on. Uh, anyway, Golden Knights fire Gerard Gallant. They hire Pete DeBoer. But why? 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 <laughs> now, here's the thing. I want to throw this out there about the NHL coaching carousel. you got to remember about this is that coaches on the bubble become more on the bubble when really good coaches are out there. Mm -hmm. And you've got two really good coaches out there. LaViolette... And now, Gerard Gallant. And Mike Babcock. And Mike Babcock. <laughs> Not untrue. Not, you know, listen, I, I think Mike Babcock's probably going to take the year off. I don't think he's going to. I think he'll, get, he'll, he'll, get, he'll come back next season. But Jim I, Montgomery is a wild card in there? Jim Montgomery's in rehab right now. Yes. So I think he'll come yeah. back maybe next season. But I don't think he's going to come know? back. <laughs> I told the East. <laughs> That's Jim Montgomery's music. No, <laughs> no I think he needs some today. time to heal. What's man. wrong with that take? Yeah. Well, you mean next season, right? 
You don't mean this season. No, I, I might. I, I mean in like a month. I would tell you or that something. I don't know how long from it takes. my experience with people in recovery. Okay. They don't want you to jump back into your old life very quickly because that's what led you to that. That's in the probably first place. the smarter thing. I was just. I'm just saying it's a wild there. card. It's the National Hockey League. I as agree. if weirder things have not happened. Agreed. I but agree. But it was very yeah. funny that you said that anyway. <laughs> just throwing it out there. But um, it, no, you're right. Bad idea. But it's the NHL. If you want to hear something really funny, Gerard Gallant will be the coach of the Pacific Division All-Star team at the All-Star game. Still? Yep. No. That yes. Make, is he still going to do it? Yes. He's Are they going to make him wear an NHL he's, logo like John Scott? He's already been named, yes. He was named, but I assume... No, you don't get that taken away. That's it. No. John Scott almost got it taken away. Well, John Scott was something that the NHL didn't like. Gerard Gallant, and hockey people love Gerard Gallant. Apparently not. Because they just fire him when he has a bad week. So, Gerard Gallant will coach the Pacific Division All-Star team. Where are you reading that? Elliot Friedman. He now said do you he's still he's going to. Still going to? <clears throat> yes. Oh, my God. Why, NHL? Why not? No, that's he des- way better. Gallant deserves this, guys. This he is way that. better. Uh, no, it's not <laughs> It's not even like, um, like a prestigious thing. It was just he led at the halfway mark. Yep. In the other, like in the NBA, I know it'll be... Um, if you uh, made the NBA Finals like the year before or something like that. Oh, okay. And it's at least a little more relevant, you know? Do you understand, but... like, this might actually be an All-Star game worth watching, like, the first since John Scott? Okay. Because the coach they, they... is not employed by anybody? Because the coach isn't employed by anybody, which is wild. Has that ever even happened? There's going to be huge women's involvement. The players are going to be shooting pucks from the stands? I feel like there's 82 conflicts of interest. If you have a guy who's not Here, employed by here's anybody. The thing. Jesse, you he are, doesn't work for you anybody. You need to be pro chaos. How are you not pro chaos? Because he doesn't work for anybody. Well, it's a great for opportunity for him to interview for jobs. So you can <laughs> you can coach for the NHL All Star game because you have no ties to anybody? Does well, because he, well, but you have to look at it in the sense that he earned it. He did earn it. Let me throw no, this they out got there. Fired, so he didn't earn anything. <laughs> I'll throw Stop. this out there. No Dude, NHL they coaches. They're great. He lost four games in a row for the second time in franchise history. One oh, minute. She sucks. And they're she tied for the wild card and three points out of first place in yeah, the division. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Because the Pacific's wild. Um, why have NHL coaches at all? <laughs> it's the All Star game. Like, what are you guys talking strategy? That's yeah, fair. but you got to reward the coaches too. No, Come on, it's fun no, for them. Bonham. Uh, Charles Barkley, coach of the Pacific Division. Now, and who else? We still don't know Stu's why. Names. That's ridiculous. Gerard Gallant. No, it is not. It's not, Jesse. It's the right move. I am upset. You are upset, and I am. I am upset that you <laughs> are not pro chaos on this one. How dare it, you? It You've abandoned no me. Sense. Actually, uh, Daniel Negreanu can be the uh, the head coach of the Pacific Division. You see his tweet? No. What did he say? No, no, <laughs> yeah, who? the poker player, yeah. the, uh, Vegas Golden Knights fan. Pretty disgusted with today's firing of Gerard Gallant. Not only was a good coach fired, the Golden Knights replaced him with a clown. Clown emoji. Oh, he hit him with the double clown. So hard to root for a team coached by this absolute clown. Triple clown! Horrendous move by Vegas. DeBoer was called a clown by Gallant nine months ago. There's actually a clip of it. Uh, And I forget what the incident was. Do you remember? No, I don't. It was something with the Sharks. Anyway, uh, Vegas... According to Sean Tierney at Charting Hockey, you should follow, has some of the best underlying numbers in the NHL this season. They've struggled with some tough shooting and saves, luck, as in PDO. Uh, DeBoer is going to get, enjoy riding that regression to the back half of the year. And by regression, he means regression to the mean, meaning they're going to get better. Well, and DeBoer's a good coach, too. He is a so good coach. So he's probably going to get a lot of credit for things that were going to happen anyway. Yeah. And that's the weird part. Now, let's throw a little bit. I've got some tweets I want to read to you. Give me some tweets. Since entering the NHL, Golden Knights are 11, or sorry, 118, 75, and 20 under Gerard Gallant. That's the ninth best record in the NHL. I'm surprised wow. it's only ninth. I know. I know. It means there have been some really good teams. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and an expansion team. The Golden Knights, according to Aaron Schuster, the Golden Knights have the highest rate of expected goals for and second highest expected goals for percentage five on five in the NHL. They've brought down by they've been brought down by a ranking of seventh worst in save percentage and shooting percentage at five on five, resulting in the fourth worst PDO in the league. And by the way, PDO means luck. PDO PDO means goals that should have gone in and goals that should have been saved. Mm-hmm. Sorta. Of. Mostly. Mostly. Kind of. I'm gonna go with that 70% true. Now Alex Meyer Mayer's got a good one. Listen, it's 70% true. It's better than 10%. Am I right? Alex Works Mayer. Works every time. 
Wow. Three of the last four coaches who lost in the Stanley Cup final have been canned this season. DeBoer in 2016, Laviolette, Nashville 2017, and Gallant, Vegas 2018. Who's next? Bruce Cassidy? I mean, maybe. No, come on. I'd be surprised, but oh my God, Babcock, coach of the Bruins. No, don't say that. Maximum chaos, I will say it. <clears throat> From the rooftops, Jesse. First round well, series. we know what they'll do. Loose? We know we know how to defend Mike Babcock. No. <laughs> uh, oh, you know yeah, that might, yeah. here, that? here's my bet, guys. Mm. Yeah, what? Have, what? Have, Put him in front of a bunch of reporters. Do you have something else? Do you have another tweet? Well, no, I was gonna. Uh, uh, yeah, Vegas. I didn't realize how bad it's been. So Oscar Dance played one game, got torched. Sparks played part of one game, got torched. Uh, Malcolm Subban in 16 games has an 8-9-8. And Flurry in 33 games, two shutouts, but a 906. Speaking of teams who could use a goalie, Vegas is 8 6 and 1 in their last 15 games and three points out of first place. I don't think that's very bad. No, no, they're not. I think that's just okay. You're average in your last 15 games. P- Pete, I don't DeBoer, Pete DeBoer joining a team that looks great on paper and can score, but could use some saves. Ah, uh, well, at least it's familiar. Uh, Pete, yeah, <laughs> Pete DeBoer left the team that he was far, or left the same team that he was. Spider Man meme. Yeah, what? exactly. Um, same so, division. Unbelievable. Stuff. He's barely unbelievable. even changing the weather. Do you think it was justified? Like, no. no, I think there's something else, and 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 I don't mean to say that there's something nefarious with Gerard Gallant. No, I think that whatever McCri- Kelly McCrimmon wants, because remember Kelly McCrimmon's the is it Kelly McCrimmon? It's McCrimmon. Yes. Kelly McCrimmon is the general manager there now. And uh, the... I forget who the president is. The president is, who was the Washington GM. Uh, and guy. he is Guy. Alex Ovechkin. <laughs> so Alex Ovechkin. Alex Ovechkin. Yeah, yeah, Alexander, Alexander, Alexander Seven. Alexander Seven. You're right. Peter Bondra. You're right. Um, <laughs> Olaf Kolzig's the assistant GM. Whoa. Whoa. Mike Green. Yeah. Adam Oates. Uh, no, you know who I'm talking Let's about. Let's name some more. George McPhee. Yes. George McPhee is his name. So George M- McPhee. McCrimmon, George. I believe... George hey, McPhee? I think McCrimmon wanted his coach... He wanted his coach. That was McPhee's coach. Mm-hmm. He wants McCrimmon wants his own guy. As Brian Burke likes to say, save your damn bullet, though. He should have mm-hmm. saved his bullet. You as a GM, you get one. Mm-hmm. You better save your bullet, man. <sighs> That's interesting, though. Like, is there a gun right now? Like, I, there was I, no gun. That's the thing. That's my point. That oh. is my point. Why did you do this now? Because yeah. the next time you got to do the it. bullet. Because here's the thing. You now. Now you've Whoa. put... No one ever expects that. Self-kill. You've hired a really good coach. And I said that last episode. Someone's going to hire Pete DeBoer. He's a yeah. great coach. And somebody's going to get fired because of it. Um, but but McCrimmon did not need to do this. And it's there coming. are people that have suggested that the players quote-unquote quit on Gallant. And you can That's see that over the losing streak. Is, is it a player's thing? Have they just had enough? Which is weird. Going on? Because, because the, the, the Panthers players were in an... Uproar when Galan got fired. Colin Miller today told Mike Harrington in Buffalo that uh, he said the players loved him. I don't understand. Like, I don't know what they're going to do. And that's surprising coming from Colin Miller, who Galan sat all the time, who he is now in Buffalo getting sat all the time. Did you but... hear the, the quote that Mark Stone had after they lost? No. Uh, he said, it's tougher, especially when you're losing to teams you know that you're better than. We're a better hockey team, just have to find ways to put the puck in the net, and we kind of gotten stale the last bunch of games. Oh, that's a, so one, just a eulogy. One, hey, Buffalo, you should feel disrespected by that quote. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're the ones who beat, who beat they're, them. They're, I, mean, I think there's two or three teams that lost to Buffalo and then fired their coach this season. Oh, it's a, yeah, de- it's a death sentence. Them and it was, uh, I was just, that's was what it looking Nashville? up before the show. I think it was Nashville. I oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, man. Anyway, Anyways. that sucks. But, but yeah, it, it's weird that they'd say that because they look fine. And I, don't know. I I agree, and 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 I gave the the Vegas Golden Knights an A plus for the for my mid season. Mm-hmm. Gallant is hosting. He's he's coaching the All Star game. They were in first place. He's not going to do that. He is. He's going to be there. You I really hope Jesse. he goes. I will bet you. You'll they should be. let him compete in the shootout. I'll bet you a delicious Honestly, Hawaiian Panago pizza. All right. That. If- Gerard oh, Gallant, you're killing me right now. I'm so hungry. If Gerard Gallant is the oh. coach of the uh, Pacific, Pacific D- Division All-Star team, yes. I will come in here on the Sunday or Wednesday afterward with a large Panago pizza. A pie. Hawaiian. And if he, does, and not, wheel? If he does not coach the Pacific D- Division All-Stars, Adam Wilde will come in here with a large meat lovers something something. Oh, you something. want a meat lovers? I want a meat one. Okay, I want a Hawaiian. All right. To be You'll- clear, 
I get pizza either way? Yes. No. Why don't I no. get No. If it's my pizza, only I can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Conan O'Brien on. on The Simpsons? <laughs> what are you doing, Jesse? Yeah, uh, I, w- I was once at a party. <laughs> And um, my Once? friend, my friend was really upset. We we ordered five pizzas. That's a lot and of pizza. They a showed up, and we had been drinking. Of course, we're like nineteen. That's like we've forty been, slices of pizza. Yeah, it was a lot of pizza, and we've been drinking, and so we were really hungry. And it's like midnight. Drunkery. And um, five pizzas. We, we find out. Good play. We find out that a couple of the pizzas, not only have the five shown up, but a couple of them have already been eaten. What? Yes, because nobody told us. Sorry, it was three pizzas, not five. Three pizzas we ordered. And my friend Derek, was that who Derek? we've mentioned on the show, I this is my them. this is my goodbye when I was leaving for Halifax. Uh-huh. He walks upstairs. He happened to be naked for some reason too, and yeah, I have a video of him walking downstairs right. with the last pizza box. He then disappears to the bathroom, consumes the entire box, and comes back out again. And none of it, because he was so upset. You know what's great about this? I'm pretty sure I was there, and I ate one of the pizzas. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't know why that happened. Not sure why that was the logic that he went with, because that left the rest of us hungry, and we had to order more pizza. But that's what happened. And that's part of my childhood. That's a fun story. I guess part of my adulthood, really. I was m- moving out to work, so. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Adam, uh, we had like nine moving away parties. Adam, we're going to miss you, bro. Uh, we had one. Every time you we had one party. One party. We didn't have a, we should have had one every time you commuted to Barry. <coughs> oh. So far. Yeah. No, we did have a, we had a Calgary going away and a Halifax going away. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, okay. I remember the Calgary. Here's one. my bet mm. with Gallant. Mm. My bet is that he goes to the wild. And I know that Let's seems crazy because people are saying, well, what about Montreal? No, you're so where's stupid. Where's Boudreaux going to go? What, you're not going to fire, you're not going to fire Montreal? Claude Julien. Claude Julien is is not on the block. French name, but does he speak it? A lot of people are saying Seattle, that he'll go to Seattle. Uh, Gallant? But if I am, they've got a brand new GM in, in Minnesota. Hmm. Gerard Gallant is a guy, Minnesota plays. Is the expansion whisper? Yes, but Gallant, yeah. So if, listen, if I'm Seattle, I'm putting the hard press on because look right. at how well he he's done. He knows how to start a franchise. Yes. Yeah. yes. But Minnesota plays joyless hockey. They play sad, sorry, Boring, depressing hockey. They've got some fiery players. Yes. And Gerard Gallant is a guy who players love. Minnesota, despite their lack of skill, needs a little bit of joy in that dressing room. They are going to overhaul the the roster. And it's nothing against Boudreaux. He's just been there a while. Yeah. I don't think it's Boudreaux's fault. I think he's saddled with Chuck Fletcher and Paul Fenton. That is a dangerous combination of bad GMing. Really, truly. Oh, my God. Terrible. And I think the new GM... Forget his name. Doesn't matter. Needs to bring in a guy who is a player's coach. Needs to bring in a guy who can warm that room back up. And if you look at it the way I'm looking at it, which is Minnesota is essentially going to be another expansion roster anyway because they're going to have to blow so many guys out the door. There's going to be a lot of change. You need a coach who is able to carry that change. You're going to be in tough taking him away from Seattle because Seattle is an amazing place to live. Not that Minnesota isn't. But it's exciting to do your own draft and do your own team. Like Gerard Gallant gets to go to the fun party again. And gets to do all the drafting and all the player stuff again. Wow, that's awesome. And you think in those situations there'd be no pressure, but Vegas proves otherwise. But if you go into Seattle on an expansion team, you think you've got like yeah. three years. Yeah, you know? you, yeah. You would have thought you going thought. to the Stanley Cup, you <laughs> fucking wrote your ticket, and you had three years at least. Then right. You just but reminded no. me. I, I got a subway ride coming up. I'm going to read that Russo article again. Oh man, the Minnesota it's Wild delicious. one. Delicious, delicious. It's too good that I, I think I've read it three times. I want to read it four. <clears throat> it's so good. Uh, Ray Shiro was also fired. Yeah. Called it. Yeah. You know, last show. He was fired for... just after last show. Yeah. Uh, you asked for, like oh, minutes. yeah, it was that day. Yeah. Friggin', uh, who uh, who got an A for being a GM and who got an F? I gave him a big old F. And uh, I think. Good pick. Was good. it? Yeah. I think Shouts it was... to the Devils for at least being honest. So, like, hey, we sh- Ray and us agree that we need to go in a different direction, and Ray's not the guy. Also, why did you allow your lame duck GM to trade your franchise player in Taylor Hall and uh, fire your coach. Were you sure about both of those things? You thought this guy was bad at his job. Otherwise, you wouldn't have fired him. Um, Beginning to think that uh, the owners are maybe getting involved in New Jersey. Hmm. Not that I have any. I have no proof. I have no proof. But it, well, you if know, a, a you GM know, when, gets fired, it's well, yeah. Probable. But it, don't, doesn't it smell in New Jersey like the owners are too involved? Doesn't it smell like it? Like you know, teams that are in constant 
the churning. There's that, constant right. churning going on. It yeah. seems like Picking something's it. going on from the ownership level. They cannot find stability. They yeah. cannot find stability. So, um, yeah. not the, the ratio. Let the wound heal. The... Quit picking at it. Yeah, yeah. Like you're wondering it why it's not healing. Um, okay, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that and that and that. I was sort of surprised about the fallout from the Cassie and Chuck stuff. That lasted a lot longer than I thought. In terms oh. of them still going back, back and forth. Each well, other? That, it's not yes. done. It's not done. And the fact that so I want to quickly ask you guys, Cassie, in two games, isolated from Chuck, separate the two. Is two games enough? Is two games fair? Is two games too little? Yeah. My answer is simple. I think it's the right number. <clears throat> it's... I have to override my brain to say it's fair. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because the... Looking at what he did, which is f pound on an unwilling combatant, mm -hmm. makes me say, two, yes, he should have been suspended, of course. 30 plus years of watching hockey... <laughs> Is making me go, what are you talking about? Why didn't Kachuk fight him? And it wasn't a matter of... You see Jamie Men and Matt Calvert last night? No. That was funny. So Matt Calvert grabs Ben. He's got no gloves on. Mm -hmm. And Ben just skates away from him. Yes, that was so great. Jamie Ben does not need to fight Matt Calvert. <clears throat> no, he Matt never Calvert should. Matt Calvert is like a tough guy, basically, at this point in his career. Jamie Ben is the captain of the Dallas Stars, probably their best player, or certainly one of them. Uh, why? Zach Cassian's on the Oilers' first line, regardless of what Matthew Kachuk thinks about him. It's not a great talent trade-off. But, like, you clobbered the guy three times! Usually that means I'm not, you got a fight. I'm, but I'm, I'm not talking about Kachuk. I'm yeah. asking you to talk about Cassian. you got to right. remove Kachuk well, from the incident. <sighs> is what Cassian did, yeah. is two games for what Cassian did, and I was not expecting to spend this long on this, but is two games for what Cassian did fair? Sure, if every time that happens, they get two games. And that's a fair answer. But it, no, no, because we've seen guys punch unwilling combatants a thousand times. Lucic got two games for it last year. Didn't he Kyle, mm -hmm. Kyle something from, from Columbus or or there was some unwilling combatant? That I can't went, remember. Oh, Bam. did he? Yeah. yeah. I oh, also think, I do think I remember I that. I think his comments in the media post game are like a half uh, game tacked on. Just a little oh, bit. Oh, that you know? was the slam dunk. Yeah. And I said that last show. You, <clears throat> right. you cannot say that. I think that's sort of why he made them because he kind of knew. He, I think he knew he was going to make a couple games. He's like, you know, may right. as well make a count. And he is not backing down. And he said he'd do it again. Yes. Which is, okay, what is the difference? Now I'm galaxy branding this a bit. What is the difference between that and John Tortorella? John Tortorella was directly undercutting the NHL, righteously, he was right, but he was undercutting the NHL. Cassian gets a suspension, and what do you always hear? You either hear nothing, mm -hmm. or you hear, I'm sorry for my actions, I won't do it again, or I understand their decision. He just goes, I'd do it again. There's no rehabilitation there, there's clearly no, um, uh, there's no, there's no remorse. There's no they they haven't they haven't provided uh, I'm looking for the opposite of incentive Jesse my brain's not finding it. There's no decentive decentive I don't know. There's no reason for him <laughs> not to do it again in his eyes. Sure, my and another deterrent. <laughs> deterrent Found it is the word yes. Um, my other problem, well, I guess one of the problems to add on to your problems with the suspension is that the next game they play he plays is against the. Is against the Calgary Flames. It's almost you're, like it's they're perfect. doing it as the a NHL tactic. Set it up in the worst possible way. Or best. No. No, they, it's they don't tinfoil want that. hat. It's that on purpose. So bad for the league if this ends in like some sort of line brawl. <laughs> I think it's amazing it will, for the league. But it will. This yeah. is going to be great press for them. Oh, it's great. It's but not. It's, all, it's not what they want at it's all. It's not for the health of the players. It's right. it's the NHL you're in right. a nutshell. It's great for it, us. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Fuck yeah. It's it's a slam dunk grand slam. Smash hit for the NHL. If there's a line brawl, it's a disaster if someone gets hurt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, now, that's, is that you, not the NHL I in a nutshell? You give him that extra game just to avoid that mess. If he cold you know? cocks Kachuk, if he knocks him unconscious, oh. we're not even having this conversation. It's just now throw for, the book at for, him. But, for, right. for the Kachuk incident, and I'm asking you to look at both of these separately in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Kachuk did throw two hits that hit the head. Mm -hmm. The first one in particular, I thought was well, but the, the second, second one, one is boarding at yeah. minimum. Yeah, that's boarding. And anybody that tells me that, 
Anybody that tells me that's not boarding, <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah. You're objectively wrong. You don't know what boarding is. It's boarding. Listen, that's we, what boarding is. We can talk about fighting's role <clears throat> in the game. Yeah. But it, it's supposed to be there for when the ref doesn't do his job. Did they? No. Did they? Th- this was... No, they didn't break this up, so I want to ask you this. Sure. Kachuk getting nothing. Is it fair, and what message does it send? I don't know if what he did warranted a suspension, but it at very least warranted a penalty within the game. And they didn't even get that. Yeah, which is absurd. Yeah. Um, so it was weird. Usually, I mean, the NHL's way is sort of it's, just it's walk the line. It's super weird with scrums that develop into fights, I've noticed, because, and this has been happening for years, when the initial play leads to a scrum, mm-hmm. so the initial play is somewhat close to illegal, and I think that second hit, for sure, was boarding. When the player should be getting a two-minute penalty, because it turned into a scrum, they'll just end up giving two guys roughing penalties. No, you also need to, they do that. The all angle the one last night was shocking. Shocking. What did he do? Give the guy oh my God. a penalty. And then give both of them a penalty if you want to do it. But call it like it happened. Call it like it happened. It doesn't make any sense. Why are you negating one guy's penalty? The 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 incident that caused this, and I love Kachuk. I love the way he plays. I do. But you can't tell me that wasn't boarding. It was. That's a two-minute penalty. It, Why is he not in the box? It reminds me of a light uh, version of the Kadri DeBrus stuff from Game 2 last year. Right. People, the the right. thing was, Kadri shouldn't have done it. Oh, no, absolutely not. In the same way the Cassian shouldn't Terrible. have done it. But the reason it happened is nothing was done leading into it. It didn't fall out of the sky. It didn't pop it in midair. Yeah, he didn't just attack yeah. him. If the, there if, was a build. If the first Kachuk hit gets a penalty, he doesn't do the second one. Yeah, and I don't... I, the Kachuk hit's weird because it <laughs> was... The second, and then there's no third. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Kachuk hit is... The first one I can understand how maybe the refs either didn't see it or mm-hmm. it wouldn't work. I still think that's contact to the head. Yeah. But I, that's something... To... That's a bigger NHL issue. Yeah. I. But that second hit... You have to call that. There, a lot of the hits that are shoulder first and then it hits the head, like those are difficult to call. I understand, but there is, and th- this is going to sound like a cop out, but a lot of a lot of officiating isn't calling a fair game. It's it's peacekeeping. Like how right. many times will they just give mm-hmm. offsetting penalties oh, yeah. just to keep the peace? We see it all the time. Let's let's not say that's bullshit. It happens. All the time. That's why teams' penalties taken versus penalties earned are about the same yeah. this year. Yeah, I'm Sometimes surprised you, it didn't happen there. You call things just to say, cut the shit out, boys. Just stop. Which yeah. is fair. Yeah. That's fair. You're refereeing the game. It's your responsibility to do that. Like you. But could've... when nothing is done, this shit happens. Right. What, what about, like, Kachuk 2 for charging? Yeah. Cassian. You could have given Cassian 4 there. Could have given you, him 10. You, well, I, fuck. You could have given him... You could have given him 19. Like, I mean, you could I'm have thinking, booted him. I'm thinking, I'm thinking instigator, maybe roughing, on top of fighting, mm-hmm. plus a misconduct. Right. You could have given him a shitload and maybe avoided the suspension. Could have basically kicked him out of the game. Right. I don't know. Um, by the way, just quickly on the Shiro thing. Um, apparently, part of the reason he was let go is the, um, according to Elliot Friedman, oh. it, it was that there was a philosophical difference. He likes to have a very tight management group. New Jersey wanted, um, oh my God, who did they hire from the athletic that I? Tyler Dell. Tyler... They wanted Tyler Dell. <laughs> I say he does it. Uh, they wanted. <laughs> Will he become GM? I, I say, say he, he does, does it. <laughs> uh, they wanted Tyler Dello and his crew to be a little bit more involved in the decision making process, not what Ray Shiro wanted. So that's why things. And why were they hired? Exactly. Wow. Use your so, employees. Yep. Yeah, but. I, I have a feeling that has something to do with uncomfortable with an, analytics as well. It's too. amazing. I just have a feeling. So I'm, I'm just I'm just quickly jumping that in because I forgot to add that. Sorry. Right. It's amazing how much of hockey is just let people do their jobs. Like it's amazing how much working in a corporation is that. I oh. was gonna say we see that in management all the time. Yeah. It's, hey, this person's managing this and they're not allowed to do it. Yeah. It's <laughs> never good when you're like, what are you paying me for? <clears throat> right. Yeah. Like you, people. Most people actually want to do their gig. Once they're there. It's like going to the gym. I hate going to the gym. I it's, like being at the there, gym. There have been <laughs> gigs I've been given where it'll be like, okay, we want you to do this show. I'm like, great. Great, cool. But we don't trust you to do this show. 
Great. So we're going to tell you how to do the show. We're going to make like, all the decisions for and you. Do you want to steal like, my voice? Like, is that it? Yeah. Like, do you want to do the show but with my voice? Right. That's the thing. So every show that I've been on where I've been allowed to do the show, where I've been hired to do the job that I was meant to do and was allowed to do it, those have been the successful shows. If right. you have too many cooks in the kitchen, like this show is an independent show. We do what we want on this show. And now the we, mess... It's done well. Our morning show. Right now, mm -hmm. we're pretty much, I mean, there's there's definitely discussions about how we're going to do things, how we're going to roll things out. But when we say, no, this is what we want to do, management goes, okay. Okay. Show's doing great. Funny. It is. got to let people do their thing. Yeah, I'm finally at a point in my career where I just go, no, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's it's a it's great fair. feeling. Um, Sorry, also, Jesse, it helps did I you do a job. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, well, now the Devils have a really interesting scenario where they have all these people uh, who they hired and mm -hmm. ignored, and now they got to bring in someone who is cool with that, like Yo, cool with all that. So, so or you got to get rid of them. This is Devils management. Yo, you down with the analytics? And the guy would be like, Yeah, I like that maths. I like maths. I like maths. And then that's how they do it. <laughs> I, I don't know, know who they bring in though. Like who? Yeah. One I, part of me wonders if they don't try to jump after um, like a Brandon Pridham or a Lawrence Gilman. You got to think that, but you think the Leafs, Money. the Leafs will be like, oh, that's great. Do you want to go to where we think there's some major issues? Yeah. Or do you want a whole bunch of money? Here, here's a lot of money. You want to be the highest paid two assistant, general assistant manager GMs ever. in the NHL. Just like we made Sheldon Keefe the highest paid co uh, coach, coach in the AHL. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was he making? Like, he was making more than the players. Like, like it was by, by it was like, wasn't it close to a million? It was crazy. Oh, I don't know. I'm surprised it was only that. It's crazy. Um, now, when you think about it, you should probably pay your AHL coach pretty go, uh, pretty well. You should, but people but won't. But they're you in charge of your future. Um, right. but not yeah, everybody looks at it that way. Yeah, no, that about a lot of things. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, That's you could true. also say that about teachers. Yeah, they're in charge of the future. Well, no, said a significant chunk of the province. Um, going That's, into that might, may or may not be a topic Durham in my house right District now. District school board Ooh. was off today. That's right. uh, but not, not Catholic though. Did they have to stage the walkout on a day where it's supposed to be minus fourteen? <laughs> Ooh, that sucks. Yep. Um, now I'm going to be uh, bringing the teacher some coffee. Oh. So um, going into last night's game, and this is what I love, guys, because we're talking about the Battle of Alberta. We're talking about two teams that don't like each other. Cassian will be back. It'll be the first game after the break. It's going to be amazing. I'm jacked for this game. I am so excited for this game. Going into last night, the Flames and Oilers had the exact same record. Mm -hmm. And after last night, they still do. They are tied for second. They have the exact same amount of wins, losses, and overtime losses. Wow. They are. In 48 games, both of them. 25, 18, and 5 for 55 points. The only difference is their goal differential. Edmonton's at a minus 2. Calgary's at a minus 10, but very quickly catching up. They're both. Oh, wow. What's the ROW there? Regulation wins. That's the one difference. Edmonton 23, Calgary 21. Aye. And that's why Edmonton gets the edge, I okay. believe. Isn't it? Regulation did, wins? Yes. Did you see Dreisaitl's comment that uh, if he's on the ice at the same time as Kachuk, he'll get off? Yeah, because they got to play on that Pacific team. Coached by Gerard Gallant. Oh, what a shit show. I love it. Pacific oh. All-Star is going to be the entire thing. Oh, by the way, I want to throw something out there. Chris Johnson says about the All-Star game, which Steve might, I don't know if you mentioned this, but he, he might be going. It's true. Um, the Elite Women's 3-on-3 three -three event will take place next Friday uh, during the NHL Skills Competition. We'll pit Canada versus the USA. Awesome. It will feature nine skaters and one goalie aside. This will only feature players from the PWHPA. Uh, the NWHL was not contacted, and the reasoning behind that, and I think this is significant, is the NHL wanted to deal with the best players, and they did not huh. believe that NWH, uh, N NWHL has that, um, and I think that hints towards what's going to happen, which is they're going to launch their own league. Well, and, 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 and like they've been holding back, like I don't want it, we don't want to kill a league. We don't want it because they know as soon as they start the league, the, N the NWHL's toast. Right. And and so they well, don't I would kill also assume that the NWHL would want to be a part of it, but I would think they would. But they, they don't want not... to have two leagues again. The... They don't want to do all this just to have two leagues. The word on the street was that they were not even contacted, and you have to think at this point, hmm. if the NWHL was involved, the PWHPA would pull out. So that's how contentious things are. And it's it's so much cleaner, right? Yeah, to and, only have one. And with the news of it. the WNBA. Uh, new salary cap, new salary structure. The minimum amount of money you're going to make in the WNBA is 117000 bucks. The maximum for the better players, I believe, is five or 600000 
So you look at that as a benchmark. And the for... comments were great. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, oh, oh God. I, I would never <laughs> I read the comments on that. I don't know why But I you have to think that the NHL is looking at that and going, yeah, it's time. It's giddy up time. So, and, and, and really, does the NHL wait for the NWHL to not be good? Or they have some bankable stars that have done extremely well. You know, Hillary mm-hmm. Knights and, and uh, Mary Philippe Poulain, and you can name a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and just go for it now. And what an easy example they have now. It's just you can look directly over that other sport that's doing a great that owns the team, owns the leagues, and just here's just a direct copy NHL. Go do this thing that's very successful and working for women's basketball, and there you yeah. go. It sounds like this event has come together very quickly. I feel like this was mentioned in Thirty One Thoughts last week, mm-hmm. and now it's a thing. Yeah, Same I with think the puck shooting stands thing. Like that was so they're shooting the pucks from the stands to do stuff. Yeah, that was suggested a while ago. I feel oh, like they've it? been. I feel like that was thrown around as a hey, wouldn't it be funny if? Mm. And then enough people said yes that they're actually doing it. I think it's, it's be, like the Sundin Gretzky commercial. I think it'll be cool, but I'll watch it on replay. <laughs> I'll watch it live. You'll and this time I'll be at an All Star game uh, without a like freaking I, cannon. Listen, I can't pretend to be excited about the All Star game, although I'm excited right. about the Team Pacific with the fired head coach and four, three guys that hate each other. Um, I'm excited for Friday. Friday? Well, you mean What's the skills Friday? comp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the skills comp and the three on three. No, the... It's a, the skills comp is Saturday. No, that's Friday. Sunday's the game, is it not? No, they no, changed it. That's how it usually is. Yeah. Now it's Friday. Now Saturday. it's Friday Saturday. But again, ah. to me, you play the game Friday because the game sucks. Is and there, do the skills is comp playoff? Saturday because the skills comp is the better of the two events. Is it's like the slam dunk football? contest. No one cares about the game. They don't want to watch the slam dunk contest. Right, and yeah. the three-point shooting. Right. Is there a playoff football on Sunday? Uh, yes, and I don't yeah. know that there is on Saturday anymore. Yeah, like Both no games one would watch it. Are we in the when semis is, in the NFL? When is All-Star weekend for the NHL? Uh, it's in it this next weekend? Yeah. This coming weekend? Not no, this next. coming, but the weekend after. No, then that'll be the bye week between the Super Bowl. Right! Right! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, the weekend in themselves. Uh, this um, weekend's uh, championship. Weekend. Oh right, I messed up. Yeah. I'm so excited, by the way. Yeah, oh my, the NFL I'm, has been. Oh, um, so excited for my Titans. Have been amazing. It'll be the uh, Pro Bowl, the premier event of oh. the uh, television Man, season. Man, okay. Can I? <laughs> There's a can lot. Can we talk of about the Steelers kicker there. Reed that got hurt in the Pro Bowl and never played again? What? He he happened? did something. Uh, I forget Who tackled what he did. him? No, he he didn't get tackled. He did something, and it was like a a funny play. And then he like popped his knee, and I think he like tore something, and now he's never playing the NFL again. He's a Canadian guy, oh, and it just my your heart God. breaks, and you're like, why would a sport as physical as football do a Pro Bowl? Why? I, why bother? I saw a video yesterday of it was like Pavel Barber and Nasher and uh, and How to Hockey Coach Jeremy all in sumo suits playing hockey. That's amazing. And, and I'm like, can we send Freddie in that? Like, <laughs> can yeah. we send him in the sumo suit? And you know what? Bring a, bring a couple extras. Give one to Austin. Give one to Mitch. Don't get hurt at this stupid thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I hope they put on a show, though. I like them as a dynamic duo act. And Freddie is their dad. Freddie has to chaperone them. <laughs> You're driving, Fred. They're not old enough to drive. Um, Connor Hellebuck has set an Atlanta Thrashers record, guys. Shut up. Connor Hellebuck has set the Atlanta Thrashers all-time record. <laughs> For shutouts. No more of this nonsense. For shutouts, not in a season, but in a career with the Atlanta Thrashers. He beat Posse Nermanen? He did. He did. I can't. Name another <laughs> Thrashers goalie. Curry Lettinen. Name another hey, Thrashers goalie. There you go. Um, Posse Nermanen. Oh, my God. Andre Pavlik. Hey, Pavletric. Uh, uh, Connor Hellebrook has recorded 18 career shutouts with the Thrashers. Uh, as of last night when he beat the Canucks. When Atlanta beat Vancouver last night. You know who I think was a thrasher for a hot second? Damian Rhodes. I think he was. He was selected in the uh, in the expansion draft. Yeah, because he, uh, he was a lead for a bit, and I always had a soft spot for him. And I had kid. his card. And you know what? Damian Rhodes and Felix Potvin would not have been a bad combo if they'd just been smart enough to hang on to them. And Felix Potvin turned down a contract from the Thrashers, and that's how he retired. Wow. No, uh, you know what it was? Because they they slashed all the goalie equipment, and he was like, "Ah, eh, I don't want to play." Yeah, because Felix Potvin's pads were up to his chin. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he played in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. He, Who? hey, kids, if you want to have a nice laugh, go look at Garth Snow's pads. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> <laughs> he was this guy in real life. He, he was, was the Lindros guy. He was pretending life. to be yeah. the burly Lindros guy, but also. 
it, it explains why they're drafting enormous human beings to be goalies now, because they can't do it with the pads. You know, guys mm-hmm. like Darren Pang, not that Darren Pang did this, but guys the size of Darren Pang could get away with it because they had no restrictions on how big the pads could be. You know be. what? Right. I was about to look up someone else, but let me look up Darren Pang on HockeyDB. It's the funniest thing. Darren Pang, five foot five, oh. 155 pounds. And was an NHL goalie. Good that for him. guy was an NHL goaltender. He played 81 games in the National Hockey League. He played 45 games for the Blackhawks one year. Let's see how he did. Oof, Darren, out of respect, I will not, but uh, yeah. Here's the thing. Darren Pang may not have been a all-star or a Hall of Fame goaltender in the NHL. Actually, he played in the 80s. Those numbers might be friggin' Vesna. But to me, he is an all-star slash Hall of Fame broadcaster. I yeah. stan Darren Pang. He is my king. He, I, I, if, if, if I can criticize my employer for a minute, I, I thought they, they missed an enormous opportunity um, from what I saw behind the scenes, here's here's what the show should have been. The show should have been 10 minutes long, all right? So it's a sprint. And it should have been, you you just chalk Darren Pang and PJ Stock full of Mountain Dew and Red Bull and Pixie Sticks. And, and have all them talk about Mitch Marner. <laughs> for half an hour and just have them, give them a bunch of props and get them to talk about whatever. Because behind the scenes, they were children. It's called, Whoa! Whoa! With Pang and Stock. He, the, it's, the, the segment could have been called, You know what I find exciting? <laughs> Everything! And, and, oh, it and would it's like, and it's like, and no, And they literally they have a, a box, and, and it's a mystery box, and every single day they have to pull something out of the mystery box that they find exciting. So today it's a fork! Whoa! Oh, damn! Let me tell wow. you stories about a fork! What are all the things it could be? It could be a nose, it could be <laughs> antlers, it could be... And they would... It would be the best. It'd be like giving kids a bunch of building blocks. It'd be great. Um, hey, I'm five foot ten. I'm 174 pounds. Do I sound like an NHL goalie? No. That is Timur Bilyalov. That is the KHL goalie that the Leafs are reportedly in oh, on. Oh, Babs would hate. And everyone's talking about how, oh, there's your backup goalie of the future. Listen. He might be someone to build you off. Maybe. <laughs> oh, Adam. Bil- Bil- Adam. Bil- Jay Wild. <laughs> how could you? Now listen, he's got a 952 save percentage in 22 games in the KHL this year. That is stupid. <laughs> That's a little quick. Yeah, that's a little amazing. It's a However, little amazing. in the KHL is a bit different. Yeah, he stops pucks. But like, yeah, you're a bum if you have a save percentage below like 91. It's different. So. Still, that's pretty high. It's very, uh, very Flyers, high. Speaking of goalies, Flyers are going to lose Carter Hart for the next two to three weeks with an injury. Not the best time, considering where Philadelphia is. Uh, where at? They are the last placed wild card team. The only reason they have the edge on the Columbus Blue Jackets, who also have 54 points. And I swear to you, if Columbus makes the playoffs, Torts is getting the Jack Adams again. 100%. Um, but Philadelphia uh, has more. Uh, they have played less games, so they're ahead. Um, but that that is their guy, and they're losing their guy right now. This next two three week span, we're gonna find out what we what we need to know about the Philadelphia Flyers and Columbus too. This is Columbus's chance, so it'll be very very interesting to see what happens. Florida, a point behind them, if they could. Stop Florida's a, behind them. If Florida can stop a puck, they could against the Leafs. Isn't that amazing? If Florida could stop a puck, Florida's in. Who would you rather have, Corpusalo, Merzlikas? Or yeah, Bobrovsky, Bobrovsky, who's been 6-2-2 two and two since he started playing. He's been Unreal. amazing. I think he got his first shutout last night. Or Bobrovsky, Drieger, or Montembeau. Yeah. Dude. It's bad. Uh, and lastly, I, wanna, I wanted to ask this. To them. I'm pissed. You're starting to hear more and more of this, but we, we've only had one player in the NHL that did it, but we were talking about Richard Sherman, who did it last episode. Yeah. Michael mm. Crabtree. Richard Sherman, Drew Doughty, and now Nicholas Backstrom have all negotiated their own extensions. Why not? Why not? Well, well, well. there's lots of reasons why not. However, mm. what people don't realize with there's agents... There's lots of reasons what? I can't do it. There's lots of reasons why... Not! <laughs> <laughs> if I were to say that... That didn't go... That! <laughs> that. <laughs> No, but in all honesty, things happen. Um, yeah, things things happen on this show. Um, Backstrom, and, and why not is a good question because you have the option of of having an agent 
And the idea is the agent goes and does things and does what, like, say, Mitch Marner's agent did or whatever. Backstrom's in a bit situ- a bit of a different situation. He would have been a UFA. He's a Caps legend. He's going to have his number retired by the Capitals one day. This guy oh, yeah. is a is yep. is so good, and it's too bad that outside of Washington does not get the due that he deserves because he couldn't with Ovechkin playing in town. I think that's a myth. Every NHL fan knows Nicholas Backstrom's friggin' sick. Underappreciated, maybe, under, but like he we is underappreciated. are aware he exists. He is underappreciated. Hall of Famer. <laughs> He's, listen, yeah. there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong wrong with being Robin. Yeah. You get a spinoff. You get a movie deal. Yep. And he's got 908 points in 934 career games. That is stupid. 668 of those are assists, which is right about how many goals um, Ovechkin, Ovechkin has. has. So Absurd. It's crazy. But um, what we what we want to what I want to focus on here is the fact that people are like, whoa, guy negotiated his deal on his own. Is he nuts? What does he think? He's some kind of lawyer. And that brings up a really good point. A lot of these agents charge a lot of money, and there's actually one agent out there who's got a bunch of clients who we've talked about many times before, who the word on the street is behind the scenes, and I won't name him, uh, charges a very low percentage, and that is why he gets these clients. And that, you know, agents have their thing or whatever. Um, That person's name is Steve Dangle. All you have to do, all you have to do is run your contract by a lawyer. That's it. You don't need an agent. If you're willing to go to bat for yourself, and in Backstrom's case, he's got almost a 1,000 points. Yeah. I don't think he's got much left to prove. You Uh, maybe want to have an agent at the beginning of your career. Yeah, like Marner having an agent? Totally got it. Makes sense. But if you have the blueprint for a Hall of Fame career in front of you, you just go, here you go. Here you go. And let me me just run that by a lawyer real quick. And the lawyer will charge me a 1,000 bucks. Because he'll look over it in a day, mm-hmm. yep, and I'll pay him for his time. If it's ten thousand bucks, I play in the NHL. It whatever. doesn't matter. Yeah, right. ten, whatever it is, <laughs> it'll cost me a flipping dime, and then I and then I take my contract and I go. Here you go. It's yeah. done. The um, the uh, I want to say, uh, was it on Chicklets? Uh, they had Nicholas Lidstrom, and they were saying, you know, he was one of the first players to negotiate his own deal. Um, and That's how cool. how how much of a joke it was because he's Nicholas Lidstrom. Yeah, what are they? He just say? walks in and he goes, "Gimme, I'm the best defenseman ever. Gimme." <laughs> and let me let me throw this at you. And Backstrom's in a in a different case here, but since 2013 2014, mm-hmm. how many regular season games has Nicholas exclude this year? Because it hasn't finished yet. Right. And I think he did he did get injured a little bit. But how many games since 2013 2014 when this podcast started has Nicholas Backstrom? Missed due to injury. I will say 30. Jesse? 40. 10. What? 10 games. And in fact, if you were to count the lockout year, he played all 48 games there too. So 12, 13, 48. The next next season is 13, 14, 82. 14, 15, 82. 15, 16, 75. 16, 17, 82. 17, 18, 81. Last year, 80. And he has missed, I think, seven or eight games this year. Because Washington has played uh, 47 and he's played 39. So this is the most games he's missed in a season since he was in a decade, basically. In an entire decade. How long is his deal? It's five more years. So it's five more next years, year. 9.2? 9.2. It's about a $45 million contract. It's, it's one of those deals where I'm like, well... It we'll, could hurt them. We'll worry about year four and five when we get there. But but I think the Caps know where they're at on that scale. Does that not, does that make sense? Like, this is yeah. sort of... These next three years... You're cashing you could, in. You could argue this is the time now, yeah. and that's it. I was asked uh, <clears throat> yesterday, like, what do you think about, like, year six and seven of Tavares' deal? And I'm like, who cares? We. Well, I think Dubas has actually spoke to that. He said, like, when Tavares starts, he said when Tavares starts to maybe slow down, he actually said that. At the at the end of it, the young guys will be ready to pick it up. There you go. Yeah, and he'll still be a valuable part yeah. of the team. Blah, blah, if blah. Tavares is still scoring 50 or 60 points by the end of that deal, you're laughing. One thing that was discussed um, at the beginning of ice surfing that was surreal to hear, but it's surprisingly logical is it time to start picking at the carcass of the Chicago Blackhawks? It is, but I don't think I don't. I, 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 if you are the Blackhawks ownership, and I don't know how this hasn't happened yet, Stan Bowman cannot be the guy that sells your shit. No, you no. cannot Someone send. Else, yeah. You cannot send Stan Bowman to market. We're talking about trading yeah. Kane. We're talking about trading Taves. Uh-huh. We're talking about trading Keith. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Okay, Keith, I get. Keith, I get. 
but I don't is 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 Duncan Keith a five million dollar defenseman? That's what he makes. Is he a five million dollar defenseman? It's an absurd deal. If you want to trade Taves and or Kane, do you have to sell them together? No. Do they I mean, come to you? Who's going to take twenty stay? million in salary? This is why Columbus. you got to fire Ooh, Stan Columbus Bowman. could. There you go. There's somebody. Whoa. But here's the thing, Duncan Keith. This is why I ask if he's a five million dollar defenseman anymore. Missed ten games this year. Mm-hmm. He has twelve points. It, it ain't he, good. Thirty-eight. He has one thirty-eight games, one goal, oh. eleven assists. It's like, like he's thirty years, years old. No, he's not thirty-eight years old. <laughs> okay. No, he How old is, is he? thirty-six. Oh, oh shit! That's now not, much better. Not a bad value add if his contract ended in a couple years. When does it end? That's a good question. I'm gonna look it up. Oh boy! Reminder: he, This contract is illegal. Is illegal at the moment. Was not when it was signed. <sighs> Hang on. The Blackhawks got their cups because they were really smart and really talented and also had two illegal deals. Yeah, well, that's... But they were legal at the time, which is what matters, right? Yeah, well... Um, Chicago. Here we go. Duncan Keith's deal, which does not pay him actual money, um, it ends in 22-23. He will be 42. Now, he's going to retire before that. But he's got a back-diving contract. Now, for this is what's going to be interesting Just about this. start stitching Keith onto a Coyotes jersey. So, yeah, three more years. He gets 265 next year, 2.1 the year after, and 1.5 the year after that. So you're going to trade him to a floor team. I would say a really good team for him to go to, given where they're at, Ottawa. Huh. Interesting. He's got to have a no because, move. Because what? <laughs> He's he does have, have a no one. move. But, yeah. <laughs> but if you're Ottawa and you try to sell Duncan Keith on Ottawa, and that's a tough sell mm. because of the ownership situation. But if you look at where they're going and a guy like, imagine a guy like Branistrom with um, Duncan Keith as his mentor. Right. Like that's worth the price of admission right there. And for Chicago, yeah, you could try to get assets back for Duncan Keith, but you're not going to get anything. It's a five. It's a it's a contract that is too long and too much money for what he is right now. The value you get back is five point five three eight million dollars in cap space. Bingo. Yeah. I wonder how much of Car- uh, how much of Duncan Keith uh, Duncan Keith's career was spent in the 2015 playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. It's one of the most deserving cons yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah, and you know <laughs> Just what? Just carried the whole thing. One of the thing. most deserving contracts we've ever seen. Like right up until this point, Duncan Keith has earned every dollar of his contract. I, you cannot, uh, you cannot take that away from there's him. There's another I, guy who's going to the Hall of Fame. And oh yeah, no shame without question about how his career ends. Yeah. I had, I had him on my uh, All Decade team. I don't know how yeah. you don't. I think you know? Ottawa's going like, to be a good team within two years, minimum. Sorry, maximum. I think they're going to be a really strong team, and he get he get to play his last couple of years with a bunch of young guys. Complimentary role. Doing what he did in Chicago before as a six seven guy, eventually. I mean, he would start in the top four. But, it, you know, ideally he moves down. That would be a pretty sweet deal. I have a suggestion for you. For a temporary stay over, whether or not he finishes his career out there or not. Dustin Bifuglian doesn't come back to the Winnipeg Jets. Chicago? Winnipeg boy, Duncan Keith. To the Jets? Goes to the Jets. That's interesting. Do they have the space? That's why I say Bifuglian doesn't come back. Bifuglian. Yes. I am into it. Maximum chaos. That's what I'm into. By the way, if Bufflin comes back, I do hope, as a Leaf fan, that there's somehow the Leafs make a play for him. Uh, Justin Bufflin? Yeah, that'd be like, that'd be just amazing. Like, I don't think it'll I don't happen. Think but be available. Um, I know. <laughs> can I? Can I? And he probably wouldn't want to be in a big need, city. Yeah, and they need the man, help so much, right? Let me th- let me throw a I wrench into the goalie conversation because we focus on Georgiev and we're talking about all these you know is there an AHL guy is there a backup out there who yeah, is there someone man the Blackhawks are paying both Robin Leonard and Corey Crawford over five million bucks mm-hmm. Crawford's had a bit of a tough season he's got a 906 Leonard's pretty much right where he was he's at a 923 now mm-hmm. 14 7 and 4 how many, how many games are they splitting it Pretty tightly, yeah. Crawford's got 23, Leonard's got 27. I don't know how much injuries were a factor there. I mean, 27 games, you don't yeah. need both. Uh, no. Right. Um, Unless that's your plan. It shouldn't be. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> like, I mean. Um, I think if you're going to get Robin Leonard, you get him for free in the offseason. No, that's fair. So is he a free agent? I yes, can't remember. he's on a one-year $5 million contract. Ah, uh, boo. Oh, it's well, so if you're the Blackhawks, why not trade him? Why not? Well, they should, but it, I, because of the value of unrestricted free agents and how they don't have as much as they used to. If you're if you're talking from a Leafs perspective, not no, not necessarily from the Leafs, just anybody. 
anybody who needs a goalie desperately. San Jose. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, here's the thing. Chicago doesn't have to sell them because they're not going to make the playoffs. Or they. Right. we think they're not. Uh, unless they go on some stupid St. Louis run. Um, and no team needs to take him because... Like for for Mac, like for some sort, like Chicago would be like, well, we want to sell him for good assets, and teams would be like, no, and they'd be like, well, fine, we'll keep him, and then he'd be an unrestricted free agent. Like I don't see, I don't see Chicago's need to sell, and I don't see teams need to buy to come in and get Your him. Need I don't to know. Sell why. is you suck, and you need to yeah, build Chicago for the future. Need to sell, but yeah. matters if there's but, someone out there. Who won't but if they it. were gonna but do maybe. that, they would have done that two years ago when they truly did suck and needed to turn it around well, they and retool. Were in complete denial. Yeah, I still think they are. No, really. Dude, someone, why did they sign Robin Leonard? Someone, well, uh, uh, like, that's a very good question. Stan Bowman's just not going to be the guy to rebuild this team. Yeah, someone until, up the line until yeah. he's not there, and somebody else is in there to get rid of all these guys who won all those cups with them. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to be kind of treading water. And that's another team that like. could be a quickish turnaround, yeah. just because they have some really good young pieces. They've also had a little bit of bad luck this season, injuries and stuff like that, but. There's something there. They're an interesting team to watch. If they ever decide, oh, no, we suck, uh, they could be really interesting. Just saying. Big names. UFAs. Let's do the press conference. SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. You are trying to do a second book tour. Yes. Do you want to call out to the people to... Bring some books to your their city. Uh, yeah, sure. Like, uh, tweet me or let your local bookstore know that you'd like me to go. But uh, I already reached out to a bunch of the stores myself. I have one booked in Waterloo. Um, I just don't want to say the date yet in case I need to switch some things around. Um, reached out to here. Let me try to find that list that I made of all the cities. I'm. Where's the thing? Okay, so, so far, I have reached out to Hamilton and Castor. These are all chapters or Indigo. Um, Burlington Mall, Mississauga Square One, South London, Ontario, Brampton, Guelph, Peterborough, Kingston, Belleville, Sudbury, just to see, um, Windsor, just to see, uh, Ryerson, Ottawa again, and Waterloo. There you go. That's great. So, Fine. but we'll see. We'll see. Hmm. It's, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to uh, do a right before the playoffs thing like I did last year that uh, almost killed me. But right. maybe like a February, March thing. Awesome. I think it'd be cool. Um, I think we should end the show on the fact that when you, I'm just going to throw out one example for you guys. Okay. Just so I can clear this whole situation up. Whoa. When you hit a triple in baseball, you pass first base. You then pass second base. And then you land on third base. Naturally. And then the scorekeeper up in the, up in the press box, whoever is the scorekeeper for that game, he fills out his little box, and he writes down in your, in your little batter's box that you got a triple. Mm -hmm. He does not also credit you for a double and a single on your way to your triple. Okay. You landed on the triple. When Austin Matthews scored four goals in his first NHL game, he scored one goal, and then he scored two goals, and then he scored three goals, and then he scored four goals. And he landed on four goals to finish the game. And in that way, he landed on a four-goal game, which, in fact, is not a hat trick. Three goals is a hat trick. So Austin Matthews last night, Landed on third base. He hit his triple. And he finished the game with a hat trick. His first one in a regular season NHL game. Wow. Thank you. I think uh, we're, ending, my TED talk. we're ending the show right about on time because, uh, I don't know, you smell that horse shit in this studio, Jesse? That doesn't make any sense, that comparison. Mm -hmm. A hit is not a, a score in baseball, a single, a double, a triple. Mm -hmm. Allow me to baseball explain to you, mm -hmm. Mr. Triple A Base baseball plane. player or no, whatever no, no. it was. No, it's they're not goals. They're not points. The hat trick is not the point or the goal. That is the goal. We already have the stat for that. The hat trick is the entity 
unto on itself. The entity, Jesse? Just like the double, just like the triple. The hat trick is the entity unto on itself. And when you finish a game with three, you get that designation onto you. When you finish a game with four, you do not, sir. Here's why that's wrong. Ah. Because, because it factually is? On the third goal, everybody's already thrown their hats on the ice. And by the time the fourth goal goes, people go, wow, it's like dessert. Can you imagine? The hat has been thrown. The, hat the trick, trick. Which, which brought the hat off the head mm -hmm. and created the frisbee motion mm -hmm. to get it on the ice. And by the way, I feel bad for people in the front row because they always have to pick up other people's hats and throw them on the you ice, just too. just get decked with the hats hat with, like, thrown. <laughs> bricks in them. If the hat has been thrown, the hat trick has been achieved. Achievement unlocked. Mm -hmm. Goal afterwards is the next hat trick. No, according to Jesse, what should happen is all the fans throw their hats onto the sure. ice for the third goal. Yep. And then and they get the, them back. The fourth goal, yeah, the, all the <clears> arena <throat> staff just comes back onto the ice with those giant garbage bags and they just, <laughs> just huck them all over the glass. You should, you, if, if a player scores a fourth goal in a game, you should get your hat back. If I ran you go the to NHL, will call? that would be the first rule I made. You, <laughs> you get your hat back if a player scores four goals. <laughs> That's it. You come you, to a game, it written on come the Come and claim your hat, fans, after the game. Uh, we got him uh, down in uh, 106. Brenda, Brenda sitting in customer service. Okay, so what you say your hat looks like? Oh, it's a Molson Canadian from 1982. Okay, well, let me have a look through 10,000 hats here and get it back to you. Got to make sure that you save this hat for the proper hat trick. Thank you so much for coming to the game. Thank Bren you. Brendan Shanahan sitting up in his box. Why does she talk like that? <laughs> It's a game in Minnesota. Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jesse. You know, okay. Or, it, it, or it's All a right, game okay. in everywhere in Canada. <laughs> right. <laughs> Minnesotans and Canadians are like, they talk the same. Yeah, it's true. Uh, anyway. Small town Ontario. Yeah, for I sure. I just like to end the show on that factual information. Okay. All right. You know what? Listen, Wrong. you had good takes about Nylander, so you could have just stopped there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, he must Here, continue. Put he on this continue. clown nose. No. <laughs> I will not. Put it on. Put it over your head. <laughs> Put it hey. yeah. Jesse won the clown nose cup. <laughs> Jesse Blake. Nicer than Mark Messier. Is it still there? Not hard. Is it still there? No. It's really hot. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness. Connection complete.